progressive states. Yes, yes absolutely. It was Andhra Pradesh. Of course, now it's been split into Andhra and Telangana. Yeah, Andhra and Telugu. But that Telangana is little more progressive, I would say. At this moment, they are very forward-looking. Because the best places have gone to Telangana. So that's why Hyderabad was the capital. And Hyderabad is the place where all the activity is. But they are also doing a lot of work on rural entrepreneurship. Yes, yes. Telangana had a very positive and a visionary leadership, political leadership. Yes, yes. That yes. is what made a big difference. So on incubation front, on uh, and they are very keen to learn from others. They are very keen to partner with others. So that hunger for ideas and innovation is very high. When I was working there, we started the first biotech park. Oh, in the CDF, CDFD or? Uh, at CDFD, when I was at CDFD. We, uh, we, you remember you came to one of our programs in IMA? Yes, yes. Many yes. years ago. Many, many years. <laughs> many, many. Yes, that was on program on intellectual property right, I think. I, I, something like that, yes. Yes, I used to do that uh, for three days. I come again to uh, IIMA. Because yes, I, yes, yes. I remember you were at that time in, um, CDFD. Uh, in CDFD. Yes. CFD. From one, one incubator, Biotech Park, we now have, I think, the fifth, four parks are already filled, completely overcrowded. Oh. We had the ICICI Knowledge Park, then it became the IKP Knowledge Park. Yeah, I see, I see, I know that, yes. I was the chairman, so I was in the committee for a long time. Okay, okay, okay. For a long time. So we, we did a lot of uh, uh, promotion of R&D, and, and the leadership would just, will just say, we need this land. And Nadu will say, okay, we'll talk to the person, give this land to these people. And mm -hmm. that, that was the making. I think political decision making makes a big difference. That's right. That makes a difference. Yeah. Megha, where are the remaining? Just send a sound a word. They yes, should sir. all join now. Sir, uh, sir there are uh, 10 uh, students group from uh, Tamil Nadu hmm. who are having uh, end semester exams uh, starting oh. at end. So they, Today? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh. It was so uncertain. So uh, that... I mean, they have, uh, they are participant of bees, but uh, they don't, uh, they can't join today. No, I understand. I understand because of exams, uh, they can't do much. And exams must have been announced later. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm. No, I understand. So, Neha, Megha, you have two more minutes to start. We should yes, start. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, upload Karlo of my presentation. Mm -hmm. So that time will be saved. Let's go full screen, Carlo. Yeah, there you go. Yes, Thank yes. You. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. And Sahil Singh has already presented his gel picture. Agro's gel picture. Huh? <laughs> so, Megha, you are full time in Sristi or how are you? Yes, she is full time in Sristi. Full time. And what is your background, Megha? Uh, sir, uh, I did my PhD in environmental science. Uh -huh. uh, since 2018, I'm working uh, with Sristi. Uh, and I know you are a MSc student. You don't look like you are a PhD already. <laughs> so she is finished PhD. No, no, I thought, I thought she is a MSc student. She didn't. No, no. She I looks mean, young. That's true. That's very good. Much younger. Yeah. Tribute, tribute to her family. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your husband that you know we were all were very happy, yeah. and a compliment to everybody at home who has kept you young. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. We'll be there. I'll be there. You voted it already. Why? Mm -hmm. Sure. 
then call your office car. Don't don't take that. Chalo, speak. So, uh, very good morning, everyone. So today we are here on the validity of B seven. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is end of our uh, biotech innovation ignition school seven webinar uh, and uh, let me uh, give you brief about the sitare scheme and the base webinar so um, sir uh, the sitare scheme under the bireg it is for the uh, it stands for the see your presentation i will turn it off no, no presentation is on i can't see it for for sir, oh, you can't can you check so, it yeah i can hear you but presentation is not on oh i can see this uh can you try again i'll try to log in again okay ha huh, maybe that will help it was or if you have the internet of your phone or something which is better let me restart okay sir no problem can you see it now not yet uh bigger can you upload once again yes sir let me share it yeah i can see it now very okay. good very good i can see it now okay. yeah. no good 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 uh so a uh, very good morning uh, everyone i'm mega and uh, we are in the validity of b7 today uh, this is the uh, 21st day of uh, b7 and uh, let me uh, give you a brief about b workshop that is biotech innovation ignition school and due to pandemic we are organizing it as a webinar and uh, the b is so uh in uh, sustaining collaboration with bireck is organizing a uh, biotech innovation ignition school every year a uh, twice and this is a three uh, week uh, workshop and before that i'll let you know uh, about the sitare scheme uh, so sitare is students innovation for translation and advancement of research exploration and it is aimed at supporting innovative student project in the area of biotechnology uh, the scheme's mandate is to promote and encourage young students for embracing translation research uh, to develop innovative products and technologies addressing unmet needs um, so there are two uh, awards under this scheme that is sitare gandhian young technology innovation award grant which is for 15 lakh rupees grant and the another is sitare appreciation grant uh, which is residential workshop called biotech innovation ignition so uh, i am not uh, going to uh, talk much about the uh, gyti that is gandhi and young technology innovation award as we are here for the biotech innovation ignition school mega uh, doctor sahab is saying something yes yes sir hello sir he is not on Hello, I'm not. I'm not saying. Okay. Achha, okay, go ahead. Somebody is speaking. Ask them to speak. Switch off. Ah, uh, okay. Somebody is speaking. Just to usko usko mic ko usko. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, no. देखो कोई और है जो बोल रहे हैं. Students, please keep your. Uh, okay, चलो. You can start now. Uh, so uh, the sitare appreciation uh, appreciation grant is residential workshop called as a biotech innovation ignition school uh, for the undergraduate students uh, we are organized uh, to provide hands on techn uh, technical uh, training and men uh, mentorship for the problem identification in 3 to 4 weeks duration out of 30 to 40 students per workshop 10 students are selected and provided a grant support up to uh, 1 lakh rupees each to encourage uh, their um uh, sustained effort and acquisitiveness uh, uh, the recipient are recognized as a bireg sitare appreciation beneficiary uh, in a year uh, three such workshop are conducted uh, due to pandemic this time we have organized uh, 
this bees uh, as a webinar uh, we have organized bees 5 bees 6 and this is the uh, seventh bees uh, we are organizing this year um, as a webinar so uh, let me tell you about the eligibility uh, for this workshop the students pursuing bachelor programs in any disciplinary uh, preferably from tattu and tier 3 cities and as aspirational district within the india the students uh, should have valid id and of the institution or the university a student can avail only one opportunity for the bees workshop training across all sitare partners um, right now srishti is the only partner with the bire for this national workshop and the for the application uh, the students need to apply uh, their uh, um, application or proposal online at the bire portal and um, the they, uh, the format of application with uh, statement of purpose can be assessed through the website and selected students will be informed uh, 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 three weeks prior to the start of workshop and tentative months for conducting this workshop is february june and december and we always keep in mind to um, you know the academic curriculum of a different university and then uh, we used to conduct this webinar every year and uh, i i know the students are already uh, have participants so they know how to apply on bayrex side so uh, i'll not going to explain that but the selection procedure for this webinar i mean the workshop is um, based on the statement of purpose submitted by the students a uh, key factors for the selection of the application includes originality uh, that is 40 percent clarity of purpose 20 percent implementation of plan um, uh, up to 15 percent and potential impact 15 percent and uh, uh, let me uh, tell you about the general structure of this base workshop the assignment of the project to the students or student team um, and sharing of abstract and the objective uh, will do it be, uh, ten, seven to 10 days before the start of this workshop. And the literature search by the students uh, before starting the base, we will make sure that they start review literature, uh, li uh, literature before uh, they join the school. And development of project plan under the expert supervision um, we conduct for uh, during the starting of this workshop one or two days, and uh, hands-on training for the skills required uh, to undertake the project. We uh, provide them mentorship by the expert and uh, some uh, expert lecture too during this uh, three weeks of uh, workshop. Um, students have to undertake the project uh, and they have to select the practices of grassroots, uh, which is uh, documented by the SUSTI over 25 years now. And uh, then the compilation and analysis of the results have been done. And uh, uh, presentation of analysis by the jury on the last day of this workshop. And finally, we used to select the Sitare Appreciation Grantee. Out of 50 students, we select 10 students for 1 1 lakh rupees grant uh, to, per, to further work on that uh, particular project. And in this uh, workshop, we provide uh, travel and accommodation um, at our place. And uh, without, uh, I mean, that is a uh, free of cost. And uh, this is about the bees workshop. And let me uh, give you a brief about the webinar. This time uh, we have uh, received uh, 65 uh, applications from 17 different states uh, and uh, tier two and tier three cities. Uh, there is only one uh, student from, uh, that is from Viruddhanagar and who is from aspirational district. And uh, you can see here the variety of subjects, like uh, 34 students from biotechnology, six from agriculture, um, and uh, six from uh, this microbiology, uh, and then uh, biochemistry, four are from uh, uh, social sciences, and uh, other uh, uh, field. And uh, this is the brief, uh, the expert list of our webinar. Uh, during uh, three weeks, uh, first we have started with the common, uh, common this uh, uh, grassroots innovations and life sciences uh, innovations and entrepreneurship topics, and where uh, the 
uh, speaker was uh, Dr. Anil sir, uh, Professor Anil sir, and uh, Mr. Chetan Patel, who is coordinator of Shodh Yatra, and then followed by the innovation and entrepreneurship. Mega, Mega, you don't have to read all the name. We can go through. Just keep it on for a few seconds and yes. just move it up so that everybody can see. Yes. Uh, so uh, there are uh, topics from uh, different uh, field like natural medicines and research methodology, herbal formulation and regularly aspect. We have invited faculty from um, different uh, CSIR laboratories like uh, CS, uh, CCMB, then uh, you know IGIB, then there are faculties from uh, Gujarat University as well and CMAP. Uh, Professor Tanuja Manod Nesari, uh, who uh, were there for the natural medicine, and to give a brief about how they are working to uh, combat this COVID 19 situation uh, using Ayurvedic uh, uh, things. And there were topics from veterinary and biostatistic instrumentation and biotechnology and bioengineering as well as medical devices topics were covered by um, professors from IIT and then CSIR IGIB and IIT Hyderabad. Phytochemistry uh, topic were covered by uh, Dr. Bijit Karte who is a system professor at NIFAR and then uh, some microbiology and live experiment were also uh, conducted uh, by Srishti's lab and the topics were covered by CSIR and tech scientists. Then uh, uh, from the CDRI, we had one of the scientists. And at the last, we uh, we have invited Sitare GYTI awardee uh, and two awardees have, you know, interacted with the students uh, about that project. They discuss about the startup, how, how, uh, what is, what was their journey to, uh, from uh, undergraduate to uh, the place they are right now and how they have uh, started the work and how, how they have pursued their ideas. And during the webinar, we have four assignment. Uh, the assignment in assignment one, they have to uh, do a doc documentation of grassroots practices and traditional knowledge, and uh, they have to uh, compile the unmet need of their area. And they have uh, also prepared a presentation on COVID-19 and antiviral properties of milk and the uses of milk in agriculture area, as well as how milk can be used in uh, different fields. Um, as they are having antiviral properties. Uh, in the assignment two, uh, that was given by Dr. Shilpi from Bayrek, and uh, they have prepared the what Bayrek does and the case studies on Pandorum technologies. And in assignment three, they have uh, studied uh, the innovation and traditional knowledge and the culture of less known places of Sodh Yatra route. So, uh, we, uh, you know, they have selected the places of that area uh, their own area so they can understand what are the innovations grassroots people are doing and what what are the different problems they are facing and uh, other things they have documented in assignment three uh, during assignment four uh, we have provided the list of grassroots practices in the field of agriculture veterinary um, and uh, human practices the, uh, those farmers and grassroots people are using. So they have selected as per their interest and uh, they have to prepare a PAS or review literature or the, on that uh, particular grassroots practices. And they have- Mega, you will have to be short, it's already 14 minutes. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And uh, they were, uh, during the webinar, there were a presentation by the students, uh, small experiments they have started at home, and uh, there was interaction with the GYTI as well as uh, bees participant with the students. And, and this is just a, a glimpse of um, the speakers we have invited. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, over to you, sir. So now we will have presentation by the students? Uh, no, sir. I think... Huh? Uh, Dr. Manish Divan and we, okay, okay. So, hello, sir. Good morning. Uh, so maybe we can hear Dr. Manish first and then his presentation. Very good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Professor Gupta, Professor Hasnan. I think it's it's very heartening to be there, uh, like always. And uh, 
uh, i'm very happy that uh, dr hasnain always take time out and uh, support this activity you know, the, to the fullest uh, possible uh, thank good you sir you good to see you it's always a pleasure to be associated with anything that professor gupta and you all do Our, our pleasure, sir, and thank you so much. I think, uh, Professor Gupta, uh, you must be a happy person that uh, another this workshop is uh, coming to an end, and I think uh, this particular effort uh, by providing the young minds a an orientation, a perspective, uh, by bringing together experts and mentors across different fields, and I think it it's uh, it's not it's not easy. and it's uh, not uh, uh, a trivial activity as well uh, you will not like uh, so many people from different streams and uh, senior people experienced people taking time out and uh, you know sharing their thoughts with this cohort of, of 40 to 60 people uh, and organizing it and uh, bringing this together uh, year on year and uh, repeatedly i think it's it's a it's a great service sir. and uh, i must congratulate you professor gupta and your team for uh, making this thing happen and i also congratulate uh, to all the bis workshop uh, uh, participants because you guys have taken the onus and uh, availed this opportunity and uh, you stand differentiated from your peers uh, within these covid times uh, this Three weeks of exposure uh, would go and pave a uh, would go a long way in building your perspective, uh, broadening your horizons, and uh, you know bringing you closer to the to the aspects of research, translation, startups, entrepreneurship. It's a it's an entire different facet. Of, and if you get exposure at the undergraduate level. you have now a choice to make a uh, make a judgment which direction you would like to go so it's an it's an aware and educated exposure for you and it would build a strong foundation the whole effort of uh, uh, creating such provisions is that the uh, the minds and the perspective at the at the ug level are uh, are are fresh uh, they are not uh, trained minds they are not uh, biased or let's say influenced uh, by uh, by visions of uh, um, of let's say a, a seasoned vision for instance uh, uh, the the pain points that we see the unmet needs that we see across uh, around us and in the society uh, they are looked at with these young minds in a very different perspective and uh, sometimes such perspective can actually if given chance to uh, to convert and translate can actually create disruptive solutions so that's that's the whole whole idea that many young minds like yours could could come up with fresh ideas and see once given the right platform and right provisions and opportunities can create uh, complementary teams create startups uh, work in a translational area and uh, try and solve the unmet needs of the society this particular uh, uh, this particular effort as uh, uh, mega just said that 65 students from 17 different states it's and uh, working together for last 3 three, 3 three weeks it's a testimony that uh, uh, the talent is spread out across the country and uh, platforms like this can channelize uh, these talent uh, uh, although in this particular workshop we could have at least one person from aspirational district but as uh, professor gupta uh, uh, emphasizes that we would like to have more students uh, participating in such platform activities so that they also get benefited and the tier 2 tier 3 cities can get integrated with the uh, with the ecosystem through this as an uh, entry gateway uh, 
the assignments i uh, mega uh, uh, professor gupta i really like that the uh, assignments have become uh, more uh, more practical in a sense within uh, although the uh, this is a virtual uh, virtual workshop but still uh, the assignments are more uh, more practical in a sense that uh, they are more uh, from day to day life and uh, would bring in a learning and an extra effort by by the uh, by the participants to learn and gauge uh, what they have whatever they have imbibed during these uh, uh, three weeks of workshop uh, i think the assignment reflection in the assignment the thoughts and the studies uh, would be very very helpful as a case study for all of you i hope for building and refining your perspective further uh, imagine that uh, after several rounds of these uh, these workshops the the attendees from initial workshop would graduate create their own startups enter into the entrepreneurial ecosystem and uh, become one of the mature uh, mature leaders and uh, bringing them back as a uh, as a role model and as a as a, for an experience sharing in in such workshops i think uh, sometimes later i think that will become a cycle and uh, uh, would be very heartening to see that uh, byrek brings in a few opportunities uh, at all levels especially at ug level so srishti gayati and uh, uh, this particular uh, this workshop under sitare is uh, is is a one of such facilitation i am sure that all of the students would find it useful and uh, the the passion and the uh, and the personal efforts the entire srishti team has brought in under the leadership of professor gupta is commendable i i you would get you would have gained and you would continue to gain uh, from from that engagement because as i know dr professor gupta always encourage uh his students to stay associated either as uh, honeybee network ambassadors uh, grassroots innovators or or stay connected with the strategy bionest even after you uh, you graduate from the best workshop i think uh, he always welcomes anybody to come back and uh, engage at the strategy uh, strategy laboratories and bionest incubators as i mentioned earlier when i interacted uh, in uh, in one of the sessions with you uh, you now have an access to the bionest incubators uh, wherever you are uh, wherever you stay uh, uh, try and connect with with the entrepreneurial ecosystem visit bio incubators or incubation centers uh, engage and uh, <coughs> engage try and engage with the established uh, startups learn how they think what are their uh, journeys how do they, they how do they move from ideation to proof of concept and, and beyond there is now a complete pathway uh, chalked out and uh, entrepreneurship is now uh, not a uh, not a casual affair but it's a very serious and a uh, defined process where you get facilitations uh, across the value chain and there is a hand holding so that if you choose to become a biotech entrepreneur you can take your idea all the way to commercialization uh, good luck to all of you and uh, congratulations once again for making a uh, beautiful use of 3 to 4 weeks of your uh, curriculum uh, taking time out and uh, enjoying the this workshop thank you and professor gupta thank you so much uh, 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 it's so wonderful to have you manish and your team uh, dr hasnain and you both will appreciate what meka told me yesterday and we had a wonderful uh, encounter of an extraordinary kind that i want to just briefly mention meka i would like sarthak uh, to start with uh, showcasing his paper you know one of the undergraduate student participant of this has published in one of the very good reputed journals the paper or based on his research and uh, sarthak can you just put it up so i want everybody to applaud him again that we are now getting 
uh, undergraduate students publishing papers in research journals, refereed research journals of repute, international journals. And that is a new benchmark, I would say. This is the first time we have come across a case of this kind. And I thought we should all collectively create this benchmark so that in future, every participant will at least try to submit a paper, even if they don't get published, doesn't matter. But at least they will start thinking of scholarly pursuit in tandem with the uh, entrepreneurial dream. Because not everybody will become entrepreneur, but some will become scholar, some will become entrepreneur. And I think the ecosystem will need, bo need both of them. So Megha, is it possible? Can Sartak showcase? Or Megha, you can show the paper? Megha? I'm just looking at it, sir. Uh, let me search. Uh, Sakshan, can you show that uh, research article? Sakshan? We all want to greet you. And we want that on the uh, valedictory day, we should once again celebrate in presence of the uh, very distinguished colleagues, uh, senior scholars of our country, Dr. Hasnain, who has inspired a lot of students to set up enterprises. And I'm very fond of one of his, uh, uh, pretty one of the student uh, from IIT Delhi who has developed uh, fluorescent microscope. Uh, I invited him to my class this time in IMA. This is the paper. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. In chemical biological interactions, oh, God, to yeah. December 2020. Chemical biological interactions, wonderful. It's a good journal. Yes. So uh, now this is what I wanted to let everybody know that we will definitely create new benchmarks. We will attract such a student. We will like these students to share their journey of writing papers with other colleagues. How, how many times did they have to revise this paper? Sarthak, how many times did you revise? Sir, uh, sir I think Sarthak. Saksham has uh, exam. Saksham. Sorry, not Sarthak, Saksham. I'm sorry, Saksham. Saksham, how morning, many times sir. did you? Huh? Good morning, sir. Good morning. How many times did you have to revise this paper? Uh, sir, around uh, three, four times. Four times. Please, everybody should note that, you know, first time when <coughs> there is nobody here whose paper may not have been sent for revision. I can say for myself, there are many papers that I had to revise. And there's nothing wrong in that. Your ego should not get hurt. There are rare, it is rare, not even 0.01% papers get accepted in first attempt. Almost every paper goes through several revisions. So there's nothing wrong in that. It is part of life. It is, that's the way profession works itself to maintain quality. And I'm happy that Saksham, you kept the patience and uh, did not give up and then ultimately succeeded in publishing. And I'm sure you will do well in future. Congratulations once much, again, Saksham. Congratulations to you. We are very proud of you. Thank you very much, sir. Great job, Saksham. Great job. Thank you, sir. So Great. now, Megha, can you start some presentations? We can have half an hour presentation. Yeah. Not more than that. And rest, we will continue after 12 because Dr. Hasnan has to leave at 12. So I don't want to cut short his time. So we will have half an hour presentation now and then remaining after 12. Is that all right? Okay, sir. No problem. Yeah, please go ahead. Nivedita, can you start the presentation? Yes, ma'am. We can start. Okay. Can you provide the screen sharing option? Sahil will present it. Yeah, please, uh, please go ahead, Navidita. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, Sahil will present his screen. Okay, no problem. Because he is working on a system. Uh, is my screen is visible to all of you? Yes. Yes, yes. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much to providing this wonderful opportunity. And uh, we are privileged that we are using this platform. And uh, during this week, we are like, under our stack has developed some kind of things. And we are going to present a topic, uh, immune, immune routine and capital properties of milk. Uh, here we have the team members. Uh, sorry, ma'am, the screen is not. Yeah. Uh, we have the team members, the cohort members during this uh, uh, week. And uh, I'm Sahil Singh, uh, Navidita Vishit, Laksha, Amrita, Nilanshu, and Satyendra, and Pratiksha. These all team of efforts has given us a provide 
a proper topics and we have developed some things uh during this th uh, presentation we have like we will like going on these three key notes uh yeah so first of all that is a key to for the growth uh where the science is not only a discipline of a reason but also one of the one of the romance and the passion it was well known of uh, uh, a scientist has stephen hawking has given this quotation uh these are the key notes that we are going to present in this presentation uh the first of all we will be going to the uh, present the constituents of the milk uh, the second, the impacts of the antiviral properties of the milk on plants, animals, and the human viruses. And the final, the milk protein mechanism against the viruses. Uh, yeah. So, Navidita, please go ahead. Thank you, Sahil. So, good morning, everyone. Today, we are here to discuss a very important topic that is antiviral properties of milk. Before moving further to the topic, let me first ask you a question. Uh, can anybody tell me what is depicted in the picture? The image which you see on the screen, what is it? Since we are discussing it the second time, maybe I'll get answers this time. Anybody? What is depicted in the picture? Because the time is limited, so maybe we'll have to be brief. So please okay, go ahead. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, so guys, the leaf you see here is discolored. You can see yellow, um, green mottling, the discoloration of leaf. So this is a tobacco leaf with discoloration. Okay, so now here we are discussing TMV, tobacco mosaic virus. This leaf is infected with tobacco mosaic virus. Okay, so actually what happens, uh, the question arises in everybody's mind that why the name tobacco mosaic virus? Now the term mosaic, it is an irregular characteristic pattern which you are seeing on the leaf. Mosaic is not only for the tobacco plant, but it can be used for anything. For example, the fluid mosaic virus, uh, sorry, fluid mosaic model for plasma membrane that was given by Nicholson and Singer. So this is actually tobacco mosaic virus, which is infecting the leaf. This particular pattern was first observed in tobacco plant. That is why the name came out to be tobacco mosaic virus. But that doesn't mean that this only affects tobacco plant, but this uh, tobacco mosaic virus also infects other members of the Solanaceae family, for example, tomato, pepper, petunia, etc. So now professor told us that this virus can be inactivated by milk. That is when plantation workers, when they dip their hands in milk prior to planting, the virus gets inactivated and is unable to infect the plant as it is shown in the picture. There are two rows. In one row, there, there is no control provided. That is, the farmers are not dipping their hands in milk prior to planting. They are generally, uh, they planted uh, the tobacco and it was infected by virus. In the next row, the second row, there is protection uh, provided uh, to the, uh, uh, you know, the tobacco plant and the tobacco plant was protected against uh, the virus and it was not infected. So there must be something in milk which is preventing the effect of TMV. So here we are discussing those constituents of milk. Okay, so milk basically has two major components, solid and water. Water is 87.5% as we can see in the table and solid portion is 12.5%. But this solid portion is majorly responsible to provide antiviral properties to milk. That solid portion can be fat or non-solid, non-fat solid. That fat is basically the fat soluble vitamins and the milk non-fat solid, which is which comprises 8.57% has protein, lactose, minerals and water soluble vitamins. So briefly, we are here to discuss proteins, which are of two types, casein and whey protein. Sahil, can you uh, change the slide? Okay, so these milk proteins are broadly of two types, whey protein and casein protein. So whey protein, it is composed of several bioactive fractions, including glycomacropeptide, beta-lactoalbumin, alpha-lactoalbumin, and lactoferrin. This lactoferrin also helps in transport, which is why it is also known as lactotransferrin. The next is casein protein, which forms about 80% of the bovine milk protein, that is the cow milk which form large colloidal particles with calcium phosphate to form casein micelle. And these are composed of four main types of proteins as shown, alpha-AS1, alpha-AS2, beta, and K-casein. 
So now, how these milk proteins are providing antiviral properties of milk will be further discussed in the mechanism. Now, I would like to uh, call Laksh for further elaboration of how these antiviral properties of milk are, you know, protecting against human virus. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Laksh Joshipura, and I will be uh, louder, louder. We can't hear you. You have to speak loudly. Hello. Hmm. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I am going to uh, carry on this presentation further onto how the antiviral properties of milk are uh, impacting the human viruses to get inactivated. So, first of all, uh, let's just see some examples. Uh, if uh, it is uh, in the case of the human papilloma virus, the symptoms which uh, we can see that uh, we can see uh, uh, villi like uh, projections onto the skin on the dermal surface of the human which can cause uh, you know irritations and burns onto the uh, human body causing uh, uneasiness to the uh, human what we can do is that uh, because of the uh, lactiferrin complexes present in the milk uh, the human papilloma virus is uh, said to be cured because of this that's the first example the second example what we can see is that the hfmd the hand foot and mouth uh, disorder in which what happens that we uh, we uh, see rashes or kind of blisters with, uh, on the surfaces of uh, tongue or mouth, hands and the toes, sir. Uh, what happens is that uh, the lactiferrin complex, uh, LF1, I suppose, uh, which is uh, having the iron complexes into it, uh, certainly binds with these viruses and because of that, uh, you know, polymerase uh, reactions and uh, RNA uh, uh, inactivation, sir. It uh, inactivates the viruses and it is uh, helping in curing these diseases. This is a genetic disease, uh, disease sir, and uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, helping uh, us to fight against these diseases. And finally, I would like to say that uh, we have came across uh, this uh, small, uh, you know, uh, grassroots level of uh, management, sir, that HIV can be cured with the help of breast milk, sir. If in in case uh, during pregnancy, a female or a male has been tested positive for HIV and the uh, parturition has been carried out, uh, we can uh, successfully, uh, you know, take out the virus from the uh, baby just by if the mother is feeding breast milk to the baby. So we can say that the immunoglobulin uh, present in the breast milk that is IgA and IgI are helping in fighting against HIV viruses as well. Sir. So these are the few examples and the impacts which uh, we have seen in, you know, uh, that is helping to fight against the human viruses onto, uh, with the help of the antiviral properties of milk. I would like further, I would like to pass on to Amrita Das for the properties onto plant viruses, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Now, uh, now I am going to explain about virus that affect the plant that can be inactivated by milk. In early 60s itself, it is reported that tobacco nosic virus can be reduced by spraying of milk. It is helpful for plants like tobacco, tomato and pepper. Scientifically, it is said that milk inactivates the virus 100% at the pH of 6.7. But if the solution is diluted significantly, nearly all the virus can be recovered. Another such disease is called tomato leaf curl virus, which causes severe damage in tomatoes. It is a single standard plant virus. It is said that spraying and dipping seedlings of, on milk reduces the ear virus infection. These are the major viral diseases caused in plants which can be prevented using milk. Now I invite Neelan Shu to take over. Thank you. Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Elan Shugarov from Bansal Institute, Lucknow. Here, I'm going to explain how the antiviral properties of milk affect the animal virus. Here, a research was done in 2010 to examine uh, the potential antiviral activity of lactic acid bacteria using animal intestinal and macrophages cell line. These infections are caused by rotavirus and transmissible gastroenteritis virus. So various strains were examined and few probiotics shown the protection effect. Lactobacillus rhamnosus and Lactobacillus shirota 
shown the maximum effect against both rotavirus and gastroenteritis virus. There was a variable increase up to 50% on the release of NO and H2O2, that is the reactive oxygen species, when the lactic acid bacteria were co-incubated with the cell lines. Now, the lactobacillus rhamnosaurus was not cell line specific. Along with this, the highest attachment ab ability was uh, observed with the L plantarum. Now, the L paracasi and E facium. All these shown that the only in case of L casi shirota, the antiviral effect were evident against both the viruses. Now, Concluding this, uh, the addition of probiotic of L. Cassi and L. Shirota in animal feed in order to provide the protection uh, against the viral diarrhea or intestinal disorder. Now, I would like to invite Satyendra to continue further. Good morning to all respected attendees. I'm Satyendra Singh from Bansal Shur of Lucknow, and uh, I'm going to present the mechanism of means milk protein against the virus. Casein protein helps in the linking innate and innate immunity to the adaptive immunity by activating or enhancing B and T cells mediated function. The basic concept behind the mechanism of protein against the virus is that the viral infection can be overcome by blocking cell membrane receptors, blocking viral cell receptors, blocking viral entry, blocking viral host cell fusion, assembly and disassembly, disassembly of the virus and the host cell and other processes. Let's take an example of HIV virus to understand this mechanism. Traditionally, the basic drugs which we use to inhibit the viral infection in case of HIV are classified into three groups that are nucleoside or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and uh, protease inhibitors. In case of HIV viral infection, the infect inhibition of the viral process occurs after infection of the T helper cells. The entry of HIV type 1 into the host cell is mediated by the interaction of glycoprotein that is one glycoprotein 120 with the cellular receptor that is CD4. After binding of the cellular receptor CD4, and the core receptors, major conformational changes occur in the glycoproteins that are respective 120 and 41 envelope complexes. This leads to the exposure to the active G GP41, that is glycoprotein 41, which results in the insertion of the fusion peptide into the cellular membrane, which leads to the fusion of cellular membrane and the viral cell. But this mechanism of viral cell and the cell membrane fusion can be inhibited also by the highly positively charged macromolecules of the milk that are lactoferrins, lactoperoxidases that bind to the cellular receptors to inhibit the viral absorption and the replication, thus leading to the inhibition of the spread and the growth of the infection. Recently, scientists identified a milk protein called tenacin C that binds to HIV and prevents its injection in its prevents it from injecting its DNA into the human immune cell. And uh, now we will talk about the second aspect of the milk that is the nucleotide metabolize, metabolizing enzymes. That is the RNAs enzyme. RNAs is a very big group of hydrolytic enzymes. That is RNAs catalyzes the breakdown of RNA into smaller com components. RNAs present in the milk can be classified into three types that are three isoenzymes that is RNAs A, RNAs B isoenzymes which were identified by Bingham and Jettel et al. in 1964 and the RNAs third type is that RNAs 2-1 which is present in 70 is to 29 is to 1 ratio in comparison to RNAs A and B type. It differs from RNAs A and RNAs B due to its heat stability and its inability to hydrolyze polycytidylate. This was identified by Mayer, Chunin and et al. in 1987. Now I would like to invite Pratiksha to conclude the session. Thank you, Sareen.
good morning everyone this is pratiksha from integral university lucknow so the conclusion is that most of the milk proteins and peptides that have been identified with antiviral properties are broad spectrum components like rnases which have protective role against antiviral infection lactoferrin which shows significant antiviral activity against hiv and cfv vitamin c antioxidant and tissue repair protection activities Lysozymes, lactoperoxidases, immunoglobulin, and other milk proteins have also showed strong antiviral effects after some modification by making them polycationic and polyanionic, which targeting general features and mechanism involved in infectious cycle. On behalf of uh, my team, I would like to thank you all for your patience hearing. Good, good, good. Uh, i'm so happy that at least uh, a trigger that was provided through a practice we published in honeybee network way back a review we published 1992 uh, all of you took that review forward and have tried to put together uh, your understanding of the mechanisms uh, that you have been able to understand now that only shows that many cases the traditional knowledge uh, and the farmer practices can lead to good science not just technology but good science and all these processes you probably would not have discovered or understood if we had not paid attention to what farmers do in andhra pradesh uh, when they put their hand in a pot of milk while transplanting tobacco seedlings so thank you so much uh, mega can we take one or two presentation of maybe 7 8 minutes of the people who have done experiments at home one or two examples uh so i think uh, they uh, they have not prepared presentation sir they Achha. have just uh, pictures and i think they are not ready to present they are not ready so yeah. then have anyone else who you feel who yes. you have shortlisted yes uh, uh, madam madam yes yes please madam i did one experiment and i think my ppt is ready to show okay. and it is okay please, please what what did you do what did you do chatanya sir at haldi acha okay show it quickly and then shashwat you be ready with your presentation we will uh, finish by 11 yes, then we will have give you opportunity those who have been shortlisted by mega uh, to present after 12 o'clock sir uh, is it visible my uh, not yet yes 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 yeah it's very interesting so why not in cold milk and why in hot milk what difference does it make um chetanya will tell us go ahead chetanya make it full screen if you wish yeah Yes, sir. So this was a home experiment to check the importance of milk. So I will take it briefly. So this is the book that Agni Puran, which inspired me to do this experiment. In this book, there are many Ayurvedic treatments given, and most of them are having like we should take these materials like haldi or many other seeds and plant materials along with milk. So I thought, why it is always milk? Because in experiments. by testing this plant extracts we use many other organic solvents so but in our ancient text it is milk so i made some few hypothesis for that so first was the null that milk has nothing to do and another was it may enhance the antimicrobial activity another was that milk may be uh, may be enhancing the bioavailability of curcumin so i tested this h1 hypothesis so at home at household level i checked this uh, minerals as this electoral powder and i took proteins from this besan and i took this glucon d powder for glucose and this is the turmeric and then i make this uh, nutrient medium by mixing it with water and then poured uh, three bowls at means the three bowls i take and pour this medium then uh, i put this cotton in at the center of this each of this medium and i have not those picks but i can show this one pick it is that curcumin extract from the rubbing alcohol i dropped it uh, in the center central this cotton ball so it will spread all along and then at one side of this of each all the three bowls i drop few few drops of this contaminated water so then i kept it uh, i first at the day of experiment i just kept it openly and then this is my uh, household 
humid incubator i put it in the next day so we can this is the first day result this fungi and all but the real results are like this so when it was the cold milk plus haldi it was a uh, little bit infect uh, contaminated by various microbes and mostly it was fungus but when we can see this this uh, hot milk plus haldi when i treated with this so there is very small growth and the uh, circle of inhibition is also very big here also we can see it is inhibiting this fungi but when i it was only the curcumin part which i extracted means it is supposed to be extracted from isopropyl alcohol uh, it is completely contaminated means it was very less effective while the hot milk plus haldi mixture was the most effective so here we can see the inference that it has shown the maximum antimicrobial property i mean that we should take uh, turmeric powder in hot milk as it is more special for our health and it is also good if we, so i would like to th and this is a completely household and crude experiment it is not up to scale so thank you this was my homemade experiment Wonderful experiment, Chaitanya. Great. <laughs> you know, many Thank of you, us sir. take things for granted, but at least not accepting anything without subjecting it to experiment. I think that is the spirit. Even if it is traditional knowledge, even if it is mentioned in shastras, as a scientist, I will not accept anything unless I find evidence for it. And I think that attitude is very important. Then only our traditional knowledge will get respect. But if we just continue to argue that no, no, because it is mentioned in so and so text, therefore it is valid. scientific mind should not accept that That's and it. i think you have made a very good effort shown i mean i'm i was intrigued by the fact that curcumin alone uh, could not have much inhibitory effect that's very interesting because a lot of scientists a lot of formulations in the market today claim to have curcumin itself which may not necessarily be the most important vehicle of uh, its effectiveness so it's a very important in fact if you take milk uh, hot milk without fat and with fat you will find the difference also Uh, you would have noticed that the toned milk without zero, zero with zero fat probably would have much less effect than the haldi with a milk with fat so it's the fat which can, can becomes a delivery agent so it might be very interesting to see that so chatanya you can do one more iteration of experiment where you can take the toned milk hot toned milk and hot normal fat high fat milk normal milk yes and then you might find the difference even more sharper differences within the hot milk also so that you can make your recommendation to the people uh, more precisely and this is a very interesting experiment uh, okay sir thank you i feel modified yes then you should read about you should also read about the fat metabolism and what does fat do to the compounds in turmeric you should read there's a lot of research done on that subject yes sir you will find some papers on that as to how why it is good to take it with the milk with fat rather than toned milk Yes, thank you, sir. Vega, uh, uh, do we have time in the remaining seven minutes to have one more? Yes, sir. Uh, Sashrat, please uh, be ready with your presentation. Yes, ma'am. Hi, all. Good morning. This is Sashrat Mishra. I'm doing my B Tech Computer Science. Uh, the thing is, uh, the entire uh, world of biotechnology is completely new to me. So what I did is, I took the science that I know, and I used uh, what I learned, uh, you know, during the BS workshop uh, in order to. Uh, um you know idealize this uh, uh product here so the problem that uh, we are trying to address here is that 8.5% of the global population is uh, diabetic right and there is uh, not much people can do in order to manage it properly uh, on the basis of a survey these are the most uh, frequent mistakes that diabetic people uh, commit right uh, they either forget their insulin uh, taken or sometimes they skip the meals Uh, or maybe you know not, not you know maybe because of improper information their diet does not go well and you know the, they are not physically completely active they don't visit the doctors regularly and there is nothing to do about this but uh, they do take a lot of stress so uh, we uh, these are the possible things that we can do of course there are simple solutions you you know put regular reminders 
you might uh, want to know more information about uh, what you're dealing with and maybe continuous feedback to your doctor about what happened last time when you took this medicine and what happened when you uh, you know um, had some physical activity you can let your doctor know about all this and maybe it'll all work out to be fine which is why we present diacare diacare is a continuous uh, blood glucose monitoring system uh, powered by ai uh, i mean theoretically it can uh, be integrated with any continuous glucose monitoring system um, we also pitch a few non invasive uh, um, glucose monitors which will look at uh, in the coming slides the thing is that this app lets you uh, log all your events okay it tracks your glucose level continuously uh, using the device uh, that comes along with it and then you and your doctor as well can actually uh, look at the statistics look at the data uh, so that you know um, proper management can be done so this is what a doctor could see you know uh, your regular information Uh, the information that you put in during sign up what insulin was prescribed what did he talk to you when you last visited uh, and you know all these live reports can be seen uh, if you're taking a meals properly uh, if you're taking insulin doses properly right uh, and also uh, like i said we are using a bit of machine learning here in order to understand why uh, your blood glucose levels are better this time when compared to last week probably probably because your uh, food patterns were fine it depends on what you uh, had it depends on the insulin dosage that was given it depends on the medicines that the doctor has prescribed so you know you can have a complete understanding of uh, you and your doctor can have a complete understanding about what is happening uh, coming to the non invasive uh, blood glucometers there has been a lot of research in this direction and i think uh, two to three products are already out in the market um, there are different ways you can either use the intrinsic properties of the glucose itself or you can study the uh, blood glucose level in your tissues however of all those uh, this particular research where they used uh, galvanic skin response along with temperature in order to uh, Uh, estimate the blood glucose level turned out to be very fruitful um we are trying to include uh, blood pressure alongside and uh, we believe that that uh, could give much better results so are using a, a integrated uh, system we are, we are using machine learning along with these intrinsic properties in order to predict the uh, blood glucose levels so uh, if we consider a case study let's say this person madhur has uh, uh, diabetes and he started using uh, diacare in order to manage his diabetes um first thing is that uh, for the first 2 to 3 days probably there will not be much of predictions but what the system does it tries to analyze the blood glucose patterns along with the uh, galvanic skin response about how your body is uh, uh, you know how your body responds to uh, blood glucose in general so once it starts understanding those patterns uh, probably from day 4 onwards it can uh, it can give you uh, insights about uh, what should be done what should be not also there is a section where you can uh, i mean in the app itself where you can go through different traditional practices uh, there will be curated articles uh, which uh, people must follow uh, along with that you know uh, what kind of workout should a person do uh, yoga and all that uh, will be integrated in the app itself uh, the uh, best part is that uh, this is not just a monitoring app for you or your doctor uh, there is this state of the art anomaly detection algorithm uh, anomata uh, that can Uh, you know understand if something is going wrong and it is personalized to you not like it's a general idea right it's personalized to you uh, i mean if your diabetes is always 180 plus uh, um, alerting you for uh, reaching 200 is not uh, that important whereas you know if you are it, does it also sensitive, tell hypoglycemia uh, i'm sorry sir does it also indicate hypoglycemia uh, yes sir i mean that is an anomaly in your blood glucose level so of course okay. uh, shouldn't be a problem there so what happens is all this information is logged at a point right so the more you use data the better it gets uh, and these are the uh, uh, screens i was talking about where you can actually go through different articles or you know you can use the uh, in app uh, workout methodology in order to keep yourself fit uh, and you know uh, the more uh, people use data the better it gets like i said what happens is that maybe after 2 years of uh, um, uh, presence in the market what happens is you have you must have collected enough information so that you can model an artificial pancreas meaning if this is the uh, level of your blood sugar right now then this is the dosage of insulin you should take so uh, maybe there is a uh, uh, further interesting research that can be done on that and uh, not just diabetes any other uh, uh, conditional uh, disease uh, if i may like hypertension or sleeplessness uh, or depression uh, they can be uh, you know that can be that can be made much better uh, if proper management is done so uh, our long term goal is to Uh, integrate all this information on all this knowledge and data sets in order to build a virtual assistant a, a alexa like device that you can place at your home and continuously interact with it and it does its best in order to keep you uh, healthy and safe and all this information is logged again and uh, reported to your doctor 
uh, in fact uh, we started this research a while ago uh, and it was specific for diabetes um, uh, we also uh, formed a company uh, and we are working uh, on various healthcare technology uh, solutions uh, in bhubneshwar um, this is our core team uh, two of us founders are uh, in btech computer science and we are supported by a lot of other uh, uh, scientists and professors from different universities um, uh, so in conclusion uh, it is a better management can uh, obviously solve it all so uh, especially we have seen use cases of ai and how it can revolutionize uh, um, different industries and healthcare is definitely not an exception thank you very nice very nice dr hasnan any comment on this before uh, this is we close this this is a wonderful i can you hear me no can you hear me yeah yes this is a wonderful work that you have described in fact i was very impressed with all the presentations made so far you know when i was uh, at the iit before i joined jamia hamdard i'm happy i'm going back to iit uh, you know one of my colleague was working on a on a on a on a glucose on, on a sugar blood sugar monitor by making use of the impedance you know impedance is nothing but uh, when you have your it's it's, a, it's it's impedance need not be measured by making an invasive uh, application it can just be measured superficially so by simple impedance measurement they were looking on on trying to develop and i think they did develop of course this lady has retired i think she has gone back to punjab but i'll find out what happened to that device and this was a very simple device you put this on top of your on your hand or your wherever the pulse is moving and then the, the it the, it will move it will record the flow of the of the of the liquid in your under your uh, under the equipment and it it will actually measure impedance and it's been calibrated by ai and ml to know what is the value that you expect if the blood does not carry any sugar and it has also been calculated to know what amount of sugar will cause the change in impedance value imagine so i think that is a kind of a technology which is you don't need even a prick of blood to do measurement of uh, blood sugar that is something i think uh, is a, will be will become a disruptive technology of tomorrow great work all of you done a great job i really enjoyed i'll talk wonderful about wonderful we will send you the other presentations because you would have to leave at 12 so we don't want to take away the time that you have allocated for our students yes, another short presentation so exciting that i think my presentation will be boring no 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 no, no. actually <laughs> see you have you have guided uh, hundreds of th or if not thousands of students over the years and you have see, you can see spark much better in fact manish if you are still around i think this uh, yes you are there so this uh, student team could even be asked to apply for big grant i would think absolutely they, have, they are in a good shape to apply isn't it don't you think so um, certainly sir i think these are uh, uh, this is the kind of uh, effort that we encourage and uh, uh, the ideas more refined and can should 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 uh, try and uh, apply for bia bia yeah. the only limitation is for big we have a minimum eligibility uh, criteria is uh, graduation so <laughs> change that criteria i mean this I, country has exceptions <laughs> we have bright kids i, I told you last time that we should create exceptions we should create exceptions so how will we, we tap the talent young talent otherwise tell yeah. me we are we are rolling out essentially for that purpose e uva scheme uh where we will have provisions for ug students to team up in a group of up to 5 and uh, come up with projects like this so a moment their projects reach to their a, cer a certain element of uh, uh, of tangibility in one year i think that is the right time to actually move up in a much larger and a more uh, more formal concentrated way but uh, we I, are I we are aware of let it gap. be let, let i would suggest that projects of this kind be evaluated on merit if they make it then the committee can decide whether to make exception or not so that we might can, be that uh, might be a way to go forward huh Uh, we are also receiving so many queries and calls from ug students and our earlier bees participants are also inquiring that uh, ma'am we can apply or not for this gyti here yeah. so sure. let let's yeah. let's work on that something we yeah we will work. discuss that further you know, you know what and we will not like any compromise to be made i mean you maintain the standard that you want to maintain it just that if somebody can reach those standards faster we should not come in the way that's all i'm saying so no compromise because they are undergraduate but if they have make they make it to the final 
uh, level of the top uh, candidates, then they don't get a stop because they're undergraduate. That's all I'm saying. There should not be reverse discrimination. You know what, Manish, I have a small suggestion for you, what you can possibly do, going by what uh, Professor Gupta is saying. If you can actually be a, a disruptive funder by <laughs> giving, <laughs> giving funds to people who don't even have a formal uh, postgraduate degree, if you can't do that, there's this other simple way out. Get somebody who can officially be the be the mentor. Yeah, and the yeah. they have professors them. otherwise, yes, yes. But the mentor cannot use the fund. It will be a joint application of mind, application of, of uh, everything together with the actual inventors. So I think that way, you know, you can really abide by the law that you can't give it to somebody who is not a PhD or not a whatever postgraduate. But at the same time, you're giving it because this mentor will only be a notional person. Exactly. Select a mentor. And Mega, we will route, we will route these applications to big program through our incubator. And uh, let us see how uh, they go through. I mean, let's, yes, let's hope for the best. I think this is a good suggestion. A that good makes suggestion, sir. I, I take it. Uh, I take yeah. a note of it. Thank you. So, uh, Dr. Hasnan, now we will, uh, we, before I introduce him, or I rather, uh, I don't know if I can do justice to introducing you, but I wanted to make everybody know that I'm greatly inspired by the uh, work that he has done and also the work that he has got his students to do. And I think a teacher is known by the quality of the students. Several of his students got Gathi Award, Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Award, which is one of the highest award for a student in our country, 15 lakh rupees. We give to 15 students for two years. <clears throat> and uh, once somebody makes it, and I can tell you that in one IIT, there could be hardly two, three Gathi Award in a year, or in total, maybe five, six. Because all the IITs, students from all the IITs and ISER and ISC and JNCSR are competing for these 15 awards. So therefore, there's a very tough competition. And in the process, the best, and they are reviewed by many scholars. So uh, Dr. Hasnan has also been a reviewer. And his comments, uh, I would like to mention to you all the students that he sends very systematic, very detailed, comprehensive comments on each proposal that he reviews. You know, there are only few people who take so much trouble to review the, uh, the entries or let us say the applications of the students with so much rigor. And we share those, that feedback sometime with the students so that they can improve and learn from them. So I would like to say that a real tribute to him I would like to pay is the kind of time that he allocates to the students both the formal student, but also the ones whose entries he receives as a part of very esteemed river of Gathi program. And therefore, uh, as a vice chancellor now of Jamia, and also, as he said just now, that he's going back to IIT Delhi, which is uh, a gain of IIT and a loss of Jamia. But nevertheless, uh, doctor, I will, I'm skipping the other formal part of the introduction because I think the most important distinction for me, for a teacher is the kind of a student's teacher produces and you have produced some of the most outstanding students who have done such path-taking work, whether it is uh, TB diagnosis, whether it is diabetes or other things that you mentioned. And I'm very hopeful that today you will inspire our team of students with uh, uh, your own story of excellence. Dr. Hasnain, please. Thank you so much. It's a very embarrassing. Every place I go, they start telling everything about me. And I want to, at least in my university, when I there, I just go to the dais and just block their, their view and block the mic. I said, don't have to. You can get everything about everybody by just doing a Google on him. And these days, uh, Google will tell you everything. And today, they don't tell you the size of the shoe that you wear. But tomorrow, even that would be known by just doing a Google on you, everything about you. But thank you so much, Professor Gupta. As I said, I was telling you yesterday, and I, as I've been always maintaining, I've been really inspired by one gentleman. This gentleman doesn't look like he's, uh, you know, he's a typically somebody who, who's a very, you know, you can easily be fooled that maybe he's some journalist somewhere or he's some, some unknown person. Till you get to know a little bit more about him and until you meet with him, the passion that you can see in him is, is amazing, is amazing. And that passion actually drives many. And today, if we are here, for, for this meeting today, it's because of this gentleman, and all of you would have guessed, I'm talking about Professor Anil Gupta. I first met him 
long, long ago when he invited me when I was working at the Center for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostics at uh, Hyderabad. He invited me for some, I think, uh, uh, IPR or, or some such things, uh, which I also do a little bit uh, uh, just as part of my, my, my portfolio. And that's where I first met him and that's why I went to, uh, to IIM. I wish I could go more often to IIM. I have never been. I don't know who is the new director of IIM, but if Professor Gupta knows uh, the new director, please merely sifarish kardo. Mujhe ek do teen bar aur bhao bhao par. I would love to go to IIM. I have been to many of these top institutions and it's a pleasure to learn from them than anything else. You know, I, I don't want to give any lectures or anything, but just to see how things are done. Let me start by, by saying, you know, yesterday, uh, Dr. Gupta told me that you should also tell us something about your journey. You know, when I was, uh, I, I was born and brought up in a small town, Gaya, which I don't know how many of you know, it's a, it's a famous town for two big religions of the world, Buddhism and Hinduism. Hinduism uh, believe, the Hindus believe that they cannot get moksha unless they go to Gaya Ji and do the, the, the Pindadan. So it's famous for Pindadan during Pitapaksh Mela. And I know I used to serve as a volunteer at that time. And it was a wonderful experience to see people coming from all kinds of, all shades of society to come and, and uh, you know, do the rituals in order to just to hope that the people who just passed away elders, they will get moksha and they will get uh, salvation. The other one is, of course, as we all know, the, the place where Lord Buddha got uh, enlightenment. And that's where we have the Mahabodhi temple, which is the most sacred place for the, for the Buddhists. So I grew up in that small town, and but I had a vision that I should be studying at IIT. So I wrote the IIT exam when I was in, the, I think, 10th class, 11th class, whatever at that time. It so happened that there was mass copying on that on that center. And the, the, the flying squad that came, they said, oh my God, everybody is cheating and copying from books and things like that. So they decided to cancel the complete exam. In today's term, if they cancel the exam, they give you a repeat exam. In those days, there was no question of repeat exam. It was the student's loss. So it was my loss. So I, I, with that, my dream of becoming going, going to IIT was shattered. It so happened that I got into All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. I took admission there. I joined there. It was back in 19, I think, 71, 72, if I remember correctly. And I, I, was, uh, I had gone there and the, the hostel allotted to me was Cherak Hostel. Cherak was a uh, number eight, hostel number eight, if I can remember. And I, those days the locks were such that you just shut the door, the door gets locked. And no, from outside, nobody knows who, whether the door is in somebody's inside or not inside. And I used to use that uh, uh, innovation to, to secure myself from the raggers. You know, they were ragging was very rampant. And coming from a small town, and also I had a, a big, uh, I would say, a, a cultural shock, you know, the, the Delhi being Delhi and beautiful girls and young girls and they'll smile at you and you will say, oh my God, she's falling in love with me. And then you'll have a problem. So many girls falling in love with you, smiling at you. And then on top of it, people trying to rag you and you're not able to get food. I took a decision to go back to Gaya and I left the program and went back. And I, when I landed early morning, Kalka Mail, I remember the train, Kalka Mail, it used to be late, late night, Kalka Mail, it used to land late night in Gaya. My father said, why have you come? I said, I've left James. He says, what? I said, I don't want to study there. Why? He said, I don't want to, simple. But I must tell you, my father was very supportive of everything I did. He was extremely supportive. He said, so what do you want to do next day morning? I said, I'll go back and continue my BSc on us. He said, fine. So I did my BSc honors. And uh, after that, uh, I applied for admission after right after my uh, BSc uh, in the US and I got into a good school. I think it was one of the Ivy Leagues, but my father said, no, don't go now, go later. So continue in India. I did my MSc from life sciences. And when I did life sciences, people were asking me, what is it that you are doing? I used to say it's life sciences. He says, what, tell me, is it botany, zoology, chemistry, biology, what, what is that? I said, I don't know. It's the first program in the country. JNU is experimenting with a new program known as life sciences. And they selected just six students from all over the country. And I was one of the six students, And but JNU life was a different life. And I was quite happy to come back. I didn't want to do the same mistake I did when I joined all in the Institute of Medical Sciences. I said, okay, I must stay here and make uh, do what, what I'm supposed to be doing here. 
But people back uh, in Gaya told my father, my father was a lecturer in a college and they told him, your son is a madman, is a mad, you should show him to a psychiatrist. He leaves Ames, comes and does BSc on us. Then he goes and joins Jawaharlal Nehru University, which is a communist university. It is managed by the Russians. You don't know about them. We all know about it. And what will he do after doing his MSc? There is no life sciences program anywhere in the country. He can't even get a lecturer's job anywhere. So I think he's big, you tell him to do. Uh, I also got into botany department at Delhi University and also at uh, one more place, Allahabad University botany department, MSc. But I thought JNU is a good name and a, a good competition and all that. So I thought, let me try there. Uh, Delhi University I had a one, one caveat. They said, you first prove that your course is equivalent to our master or BSc honors course, because we did a two years program. We were the graduating group. So anyway, so to cut the long story short, I did my, my MSc and people were wondering, what lectureship I realized that maybe at that time, people thought that after MSc, the only thing you can do is to become a lecturer or you know, doing a science or doing a career. I remember very fond of science in my, when I was in the fifth class or fourth class, I made a, uh, used to be a, what my, I, I was very fancied by a small, a small um, uh, toy. If you are right, the light will light. The bulb will light. That was a name. I don't know how many of you have seen that. This is, they'll give you two small uh, electrodes. Uh, I would say not electrodes. And you press the top panel will be the questions. Bottom panel will be the answers. And there's a bulb in between. If you want to know what is the uh, capital of, uh, of, of, uh, of Constantinople, you put Constantinople there. And here you put all the possible answers. The answer that gives you the light glows is what it is that the correct answer is. I was wondering how the hell does this know? And then I realized that, okay, there is a connectivity between that and this. And only when you do, and I made that machine myself. I said, oh, that's wonderful. And I initially tried to sell it. And I realized that I just, what a fool I am. But anyway, that was the initial things I used to do. But then I left everything and joined my MSc program. Right after MSc, I got into uh, to MIT to do a PhD. My father again said, Beta, Abhi Majjao, you do your PhD here. JNU is a good place. And I must say, I had the wonderful uh, uh, support of people like Ubaid Siddiqui, who my father knew. And I would, could take the liberty of writing to him straight away without no, just giving my father's introduction. And uh, uh, he would immediately reply. And I have his letter with me. And he says, look, JNU is a good place. They are experimenting with this. They have a bunch of very good people. You can always come to IFR, but if you can get into JNU, that's also a good place. So I did my, 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 my in a JNU, I joined for PhD. And I must tell you for, for one year, when I joined for PhD, when I joined masters, it was an emergency time and everything was absolutely quiet because uh, I remember in the, it was in, in June or July, June when I had joined the hostel, there were raids in the night and I was told in the room next to my Ganga hostel room, uh, there was a police raid and they had picked up boys from our hostel. Turned out to be that they were all sent to jail because emergency has been declared. Then when I finished, it was 70, it was 77, emergency has been lifted and there was a breath of fresh air and JNU being JNU, I thought I must uh, act also, I must also take part in this celebration of democracy. And I became a union leader. I soon realized that, oh my God, what will I do being a union leader? That's not my cup of tea, where will I earn money? I come from a very small uh, class family, middle, lower class, lower or up, up, upper lower class family. Uh, I can't be a union leader and not do anything in my life. So I, just one year I did, and after that I just quit completely. And then after that, I topped my MPhil exam. I had the highest score. The other day, I went for the last time as a member of the Special Academic Committee of uh, JNU, and I realized that the score that I scored in JNU Life Sciences, 8.71 out of 9, or 8.9, but I think out of 9 was the highest score ever given to anybody. And I said, wow, that's very nice. I thought I just somehow managed to score that, but nobody had beaten my score. I left. I joined, uh, uh, went abroad, 
was there for a, for a, uh, I joined the Delhi University. After that, I got a job at Delhi University without having a master's degree in, in botany because I have a, a PhD from JNU. And then again, within two years time, in fact, one year, 10 minutes, ten, one year, uh, 10 days, about one year time, I took a leave, extraordinary leave given to me. And I joined, uh, I went abroad to do my postdoc because I realized that my career at Delhi University, which, is the, which was the best place in the country at that time to do botany and to do biological sciences, at least the plant sciences part, I realized that there's too much of hierarchy. In JNU, there was hardly any hierarchy. Uh, we used to address our professors by their first name. And you could walk into the room anytime. You don't even have to knock. So, no, but in, JNU, in Delhi University, oh my God, you are a lecturer. You are a senior lecturer, you are an associate prof reader. No, you can't be, you know, all kinds of, and I realized that I, I'm not, this is not the right place for me, so I must move on. And then finally I, I resigned. And again, my father's friend said, look at this guy, he's mad. He got a job at Delhi University and now he resigned. And then I was visiting India and I, I, I got to meet Professor Talwar, who I had written to him when he had started this National Institute of Immunology. And that was a day, two days from, from that day I was leaving. But let me tell you one small incident in my life which has remained very, very alive till today. And that is on a breakfast table, two days before we were leaving back for, to the US, we had come to India to visit our, our family. We had not been to India for four years after leaving India. And then my father asked me, Beta, what are your long-term plans? And I said, I uh, would like to stay there for a few more years and then uh, see what I can do. Maybe then come back, try to come back to India. He says, yes, I know you must be doing very well there. Quality of life is very good. Everything is superb there. You have a car, you have a house, you have everything, you have money. But remember one thing, my son. And you know, the way, you know, typical small family, when we are, you know, your father is very proud of you and he says, Peter, jungle mein mor nacha kisne dekha? And this saying, Anil, wow. Wow. really stuck into my, I mean, I, it is wow. a deep impression in my mind. I told my wife, Abbi is saying like that. Abbi is a word I be called to a father. We call, address him as not as Abba or and we call, we used to address him as Abbi. So I said, Abbi, kya rahe ke beta, jungle mein mor nacha kisne dekha? Ye tumhara mulk hai. This is your country. You must come back to your country. This country, you'll inspire people. People will learn from you. Deko, jitni bhi double rooting khal hoge, Americans will not accept you as Americans. They still will consider you as an Indian. You don't forget your color of the skin is not white. You're still, still colored people. And this 20 minutes talk he gave me, I didn't say a word, but it left a deep impression. And believe me, within two years after this meeting, I came back and accepted Professor Talwar's offer to, to join as a national, at the National Institute of Immunology as a, as a scientist. And I've continued to work there. There were offers in between to join as a director. They thought I should be, and, and in fact, you know, I must also say because of my background and because of other reasons, today is not the right forum to say, but people used to underestimate me. They used to say, oh, ye bechara hai. And I used to feel very good about it because, you know, I realized that when you are underestimated, you don't have much enemies. But if you are overestimated, more enemies are created. People look at you. Oh, my God, look at him. He's doing so well. Oh, my God. But if you are underestimated, nobody looks at you critically until one day they realize that, oh, my God, he has gone so far. So I, I, I was very happy that, you know, when I became the first Bhatnagar awardee, I became the first person to be elected at the, as, a, as a member of the National Academy of Sciences. I got all kinds of awards one can think of in India. And then uh, people, by the time they realized, they said, oh God, this fellow has... And then they all came to me, who used to call me Bechara and used to suggest to me, you apply there, you will get a job there, you will get a job there, you will get a job there, what will And then things changed. After that, I, and I, I really appreciate and salute my late father for having built this confidence in me that this is your country. You must work for your country. And I am very happy people who came back to me when I was coming back to India, my boss there said, Sayyid, you take a green card. 
I said, no, I'm not interested. He says, what? You're the first Indian I've seen who is not interested. Those days, it was very easy to get a green card. And once you have a green card, you can get a faculty position. And in fact, lined up a faculty position for me as an assistant professor. I said, Tom, Tim, let me go back to India. I want to go back and try. He says, go, I'm not saying don't go, but uh, take this in case you want to come back, you can come back. I said, that's precisely the reason I don't want to take a green card because if I take a green card, then I will always have this escape route in my mind. I will not like to struggle and, and work my way up. I would take the softer option to hell with it, let me go. And believe me, when we came back to India, we had to fight for gas connection. I had to look for a, for a, a school for my daughter. And the common reply was, there is no seat. And my three-year-old daughter will tell me that, Abu, if they say they don't have seat, why can't we take my own chair to the school? You know, that, that kind of innocence. And I realized that this is a struggle. And I'm very happy I did not take my green card. Otherwise, I would have gone back. Three other colleagues who joined NII along with me, they're all back in the US. They've done well. But, you know, it's, it's a wonderful feeling that, you know, they have yet to reach the distance that I have covered staying back in India. And that is the tribute that I give to if you do good science, if you do excel, if you do things good. And always remember, you are, you are, you are nobody. It's a relative world. You may think you are a great person, but compare yourself to somebody who has done better than you. Then you will find, oh my God, how poor you are. If you start comparing with somebody who has done worse than you, then you start feeling I'm a great man. That is something is going to kill you. So always be down to earth. Always compare yourself with somebody who has done better than you. Then you'll know what your worth is, where you stand, and then aspire to move up the ladder. And always remember that all these awards are nothing, but you know when you do a long drive, whether you drive or you bike or do whatever, you find milestones on the road. So these are all milestones. These are not journey endpoints. Journey endpoints, you don't know. Nobody knows what is your endpoint. You have a long way to go. And that's what I do. I have a long way to go. I don't believe in these awards. It's a good thing to have these awards. And the best part with these awards are that you feel good when you, uh, you, you aspire for it when you don't get it. When you get it, you said, oh my God, what is the big deal? There's no big deal. But that's, that's the way all awards are. That's the way it should all be taken. And you must remember that you are nobody. There are people better than you who have done better than you and you have to do still better. Now, let me come back to with this very brief introduction of myself and I've taken a good amount of time for myself, but Professor Gupta told me I have time till 12. So I have still about half an hour plus time with me and I'll leave some last five to seven minutes for question answers for myself. One thing I must tell you from my own life, and in fact, uh, there was a wonderful survey carried out. People wanted to see what is the reason for the success of the most successful people in the world? So this was actually a published story. Uh, they looked at the most successful people in the world, be it painter, be it artist, be it scientist, be it politicians, be it anything in all walks of life, about a dozen different walks of life. And they said, okay, maybe the best education. Then they said, no. Einstein didn't even go to, didn't have an edu education. Then they said, no, no, maybe the best. They said, no, even Steve Jobs didn't have, didn't go to college. Then they said, maybe, maybe a good family background. They said, no, that's not true. This person came from a, from a person who first generation learner. So then they said, maybe the wealth, the economic background of the, of the person, they said, that's also not true. The only thing that was common to all the successful people in the world that they had included in their survey was their ability to take risk. All these people had taken huge risk in their risk in their career. And that's what I even did. And I continue to do that. This is my ninth job, eighth job in my career. I have never stayed at one job. I believe you must leave before people say, when is he leaving? Rather than say, why has he left? So I believe people, people ask me, why did you leave? Rather than when is he leaving? And that's what has taught me. And that's what allows me to, to meet. And always be in the company of good, of young people, people who inspire you and get inspired from them rather than, you know, Professor Gupta has talked, has mentioned that my students have done well. It is a pure coincidence, uh, Professor Gupta, sheer coincidence they have done well. I had no role to play except that creating a good ecosystem around them. I, I am a little choosy in who I select. And as I said, I don't give a damn where you have come from. You may have come from a small state university or a poor college, a, a, a rural college, but doesn't matter. 
even if you don't speak english it doesn't matter we'll tell you we'll communicate i was a first person to take a, a handicapped person in my who could not speak who could not uh, hear and she did phd with me and everybody in the in the institute they said no how can we take she, she can't even i can't even communicate with her i said we'll manage and she is now a, a faculty member at the university of hyderabad you know so it's a wonderful feeling that these people who you think the, the society feels that they can't do justice to what your expectations are you hand hold them and they do justice eventually to to themselves and feel proud it's a very good feeling when you find that your phd student is now an advisor to that uh, <laughs> buffoon president of a big country in terms of uh, he is a director of a, of a big lab in harvard and also advisor on bio on biosafety and biosecurity it's a good feeling that when your student uh, who did phd with you uh, ends up becoming the director of a united nation laboratory in dhaka in bangladesh it's a good feeling that they are all everywhere else in the world it's very nice feeling but the feeling that you get is that you have transformed their lives and that is what is is the the joy that i get professor uh, gupta mentioned about the iit one of the things that i moved to iit was you know i never got into iit because i could not uh, clear the exam so after my term at the at the hyderabad university got over uh, there was a, a visit by a very eminent person who said i've heard so much what you have done to hyderabad university i want to take a look at it i've never been there he was a former vice chancellor uh, one term before i joined and i took him around he says i can't believe how did you do all this i said i didn't do anything the people here did i only act as a at the at the at the at the macro level i don't do micro management i leave the macro part to the people who know it better than i do then uh, he said what is your plan i said i don't know he said what do you mean he says i said i don't know i don't have any well you'll go back to cdfd center for dna fingerprinting and diagnostic i said no i have already given a technical resignation so i can't go back Oh my God! So I said I'll be without a job. Then he called up the director of IIT Delhi. He said, "Would you like to invite Professor Hassan?" He says, "Will he come?" And the rest is all history. I became the third person in IIT's uh, history to be invited as a professor. I didn't, I didn't apply. I didn't go through a selection process. The board of governor recommends it, and they invite me, and I'm there as a professor. And I served there for eight years. So first two years, I spent time telling people. how do we learn how, why not we learn from nature and do engineering inspired by nature and i gave lectures after lectures and when i left iit superannuated last year i was very happy that there are about 40 we lost your voice dr hasnain we lost your voice uh, your connection can you reconnect dr hasnain your connection Can you hear me now? Can you hear yeah, me now? Yeah, yeah, it's okay now. It's okay now. The connection went off, so I just turned on my 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 iPhone. Yeah. So there are people who who are, were very very happy that I'm there, and 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 finally uh, we have now about forty fifty people who are doing biology inspired engineering, and now there's a big uh, uh, focus to coordinate and and integrate all the biology group, and that is where I met my colleagues and I said, why don't we do something for tuberculosis, which is my pet. and that is the the very simple uh, device that we that we created together and that is we called it as chai drishti chai is a is a hindi for tuberculosis tb and drishti as you know is to see so we named it in english as ctb and in uh, hindi we uh, called it chai drishti and this device uh, got recognized by by anil and his group and it got an award from the president of india and the president of india has spent about 52 seconds on this stall and they were thrilled that he spent so much time asking about it and now the the, the bottom line today is we are putting this device in all major uh, tertiary care primary care tb centers because it's so simple to identify tb and tb is the world's largest killer uh, in terms of taking human lives somebody dies of tb every 20 seconds and i continue to work on tv and this is something which we have done we have done another device we call it imc square emc square of many of you would be familiar it's a einstein's famous equation we call it imc square i is for immuno m is for magnetic c is for cell c is for capture imc square device which is also used to to capture the pathogens identify them 
and and purify them in a matter of uh, less than half an hour and then you can do whatever you want with them so that device is also getting ready to be to be marketed ready to be to be uh, uh, to be taken forward and proof of principle to be provided so that is where we are so risk taking is a very important thing and today we need to really worry about the risk taking the reason is very simple you know we we had a wonderful talk about ai and ml we also do a little bit of ai and ml in my lab at iit and also now at uh, in my lab at the institute of molecular medicine and now at the department of uh, uh, biochemical engineering and biotechnology dbeb that we call it the iit delhi but you will be surprised nobody in the world ever predicted that a virus known as covid 19 will come they were all predict- predicting that the flu virus that uh, killed uh, so many took so many lives about 100 years ago will visit the world again but nobody thought about uh, covid 19 and that is something it's a challenge to us and when i look at it i said oh my god we have the world's best computers uh, in the world uh, not that just in india but elsewhere too yet we could not best minds are there yet we could not get the get the anybody any idea that there is a disease which is coming and this disease is the only occasion that has reignited our indian philosophy of vasudev kutumbakam the world is a family no other in global incident has put the world together has united the world it doesn't matter whether you are rich country poor country colored country black country cold country warm country muslim country buddhist country any country of the world every country of the world has been savaged has been affected by this pandemic caused by a simple rna virus a very small rna virus genome the corona virus sars corona virus Uh, which is uh, virus two, SARS-CoV-2, and the name was given because it was found to be very close to the flu virus. And SARS, as many of you know, is an acronym for Severe Advanced uh, Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, that means it is primarily a, 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 a respiratory disease, a disease of the lungs. And that was a big mistake. Many of us, many of the clinicians, and many of us did. We thought it causes only problems in the in the in the lungs, and so everybody needs to be put on ventilator. And you will be shocked that the initial stages of the coronavirus epidemic, pandemic, people dying were dying not because of COVID, but dying because of the 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 incubator that was because of the 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 the, the device that was inserted into your into your lungs to make you breathe properly. and that was kill taking more lives and everybody was saying that i don't have enough of those uh, devices and we, my hospital must have and even in india we were getting our railways to manufacture those uh, those uh, devices till we learned that just about th- less than 30% are, of the people who are infected with covid are d- dying of lung related disease the remaining are dying of something else and th- this was one of the first paper that we we sent to a journal which is a top journal in the world new england journal of medicine which has an impact factor of perhaps 70 or something and there we said that this virus is actually having a an receptor that allows us to into allows the virus to infect every single part of the human anatomy or or, or human body an adult human body is made up of about 10 to the power 14 cells and 10 to the power 14 cells are are is a very large number these are all organized into small small organoids and organs uh, the heart the liver the mu- the muscle the brain the kidney the bone the the uh, the circulatory system and everything so this virus can in theory affect every uh, infect every single cell of the human anatomy and that's exactly what is proven to be true at uh, the first lecture the first topic i i i talked about it was when i was in hyderabad in february this year and the, uh, the people interviewed me i think it was there if you do a google you'll find out they were saying that uh, we are unnecessarily worried the press asked me the question we will be we are unnecessarily worried let summer come in and the virus will die because these viruses don't survive beyond 30 degrees celsius and i told them friends you are mistaken you don't know the biology about this virus even today we still don't know much about it but whatever little i knew at that time i said this virus 
will be completely refractile to temperatures either extreme or an ex extreme hot or extreme cold he said look none of the flu viruses they attack you in, in summer they do you what they do i said that's the mistake we are thinking we are thinking it's a flu virus it's actually not necessarily a flu virus it has a lot of uh, attributes common to the flu virus but it is not completely a flu virus and i was i think time has shown that yes it is absolutely correct this virus summer or anything summer had a peak of of viral infections and today we are witnessing the second peak in fact it's difficult to say are we witnessing the second peak or are we witnessing one peak every week in the america in the us particularly the virus every week the number of cases of flu viruses are going up from last week new records are being created more than 300000 people have been infected with this flu virus in in us uh, sorry more than 10 more than a million, million more than 300 people have died because of the flu virus uh, in in the us because of the covid virus in the us it has never happened before and more are going to die because this virus is not going to stop tomorrow people may say the vaccines will come you must have heard today morning there was a meeting called by the by the uh, by the health ministry to look at the new virus which is growing very rapidly <clears throat> and spreading very rapidly in the uk what is the difference between this virus the difference is it has a new mutation that is on the place same place where the receptor binding is there what is the receptor the receptor is a is a kind of a kind of a lock and a key mechanism it goes and recognizes that the lock the key and then opens the door which is exactly what the virus the way it enters the system the host and because it can enter any host or not that is the protein that is involved is known as the spike protein and all our anti all our vaccines that are being three of them two of them that are being already marketed and sold and and used in the U in the uk and also in the us in india also we are told it will be there very soon but in the uk the the market the, the vaccine which is the pfizer vaccine and the other vaccine moderna vaccine both of them are looking at neutralizing the 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 the, the, the viral coat protein the spike protein now if this mutation is going to be there chances are that these antibodies will be will not no longer be able to neutralize the virus i'm not trying to scare you but i'm just going to to make this very clear to you that there is no guarantee that the virus will not try to resist the vaccination by creating mutations and uk is the first country to go in for vaccination it may be purely coincidental and i repeat purely coincidental that the the, the mutant virus is come up is, is spreading very fast in the uk i do not know if there is any link between the vaccination and the uh, spread of the new new virus it may not be any at all but the fact is it it will put a question mark on what could happen assuming that the vaccine does work and let's hope it does work how long will this protect you know all of us had been exposed and protected with the polio vaccine and we don't we will never get polio again you know why because our body has seen the polio virus and once it, it even if and, and has made enough antibody and has made enough defense mechanism and has also dedicated a small part of the immune armory tomorrow agar dobara ye virus mere body mere sharir mein enter karta hai to i will be able to to attack it and and neutralize it and that is known as a memory response immune memory so the body knows how to have an immune memory against a polio virus and that is the the way a good vaccine works it creates a good memory response it not only takes care of of it immediately but also ensures that tomorrow you don't get it that is what is missing in the sars vaccine in the in this in the covid uh, in the coronavirus vaccine there is no memory response the maximum you can expect to be protected is about 6 months you will feel very happy if you can be protected for about a year but that to year also i'm not too sure how many people and the fact is today you are seeing many people who got infected in fact one of my student a postdoc in my lab he initially got covid recovered and he got reinfected and the second time it was so severe that we thought anything could happen to him 
Fortunately, he recovered. He's back. Yesterday, he was discharged. And I was really praying for him, Sandeep, ke liye, ke the, he recovers because, you know, he's, he, so reinfection is becoming quite common. And what does reinfection mean? Reinfection simply means the virus, your body has seen the virus, yet when the virus enters your body, the body again tries to protect itself. Why? It should have already been immune to it. And that is where the question comes in. So let me come back to what we are we are we need to do. Many of us are are funded or are recognized by the SRISTI and the and this kind of a, a this recognition system, which Professor Gupta has been has been nurturing and hand holding for for quite some time. I think it's time to look at something where you can you can apply your mind to see can I make a prediction based on AI or ML? If I get a vaccine today, what are the chances? that I will need to get myself revaccinated when? It's not going to be easy, let me tell you, because you're dealing with the human body. The human body, we know it's very easy to land a, a, an aircraft on the moon. When I say that, or not that I'm trying to make fun of people who do this, but the rules are, they work on the rules of physics and chemistry, mostly physics and engineering. The biology, the rules are not defined yet. Every day, a new rule, Nobel Prize can be given today for a discovery 30 years later, that discovery was proven to be wrong. Not because they did a wrong thing, they did a mistake. No, based on whatever little they knew, that was the correct thing to talk about it. You know, people thought one gene, one enzyme. You have one gene, it'll give you one enzyme and one action, one action. And today we'll know it's all, all rubbish. One gene can give rise to multiple proteins and one protein can give rise to multiple functions. So this whole concept on which the Nobel Prize was, and there will be many such examples, I can tell you, but these only go to show that biology is far more complicated than established disciplines of engineering sciences. So it's, <clears throat> you, if you know the laws of physics and know the laws of engineering sciences and others and mathematics, you can put things together, but the laws of biological sciences are unknown. I'll conclude my talk by towards the end, I still have time. Let me now to spend some time on, on something else. You know, there is a, uh, uh, people feel that, you know, Indian mind may not be the best mind. I, I completely disagree. The man on moon mission that was, man on Mars mission that traveled 68 crore kilometers. And what was the price to travel a vehicle, uh, to take a vehicle to this far? A mere 454 crore rupees. And that makes it to 6.67 per kilometer. That is all the, the, the Mars mission cost. To travel that distance, it cost India just 6.67 kilometer rupees per kilometer. That is not even the price of an Ola cab that you do. Imagine that is what the Indian mind can do. And that is where I feel that Indian mind, and I firmly believe Indian mind is the best mind. People say Jewish mind is the best mind. Jewish mind as a, are the most networked people. So they, they know the, how to appreciate. We don't appreciate. We, we still believe that we, 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 we don't want to give credit to somebody. We don't want to look at it, look at people on, on their face, on, on what they are. Rather, we compare with X, Y, Z. And that is where we do a mistake. But believe me, the other day when I was at the IIT Delhi, at the Hyderabad University, we visited Stanford along with a few people. Along with me were also the director of the, uh, of the IIT Delhi. And the Stanford president asked, what brings you here? He said, of course, I'm part of the delegation. And I thought I'll also meet my son who has gotten admission into Stanford. He said, oh, well, that's nice. But why did you bring him here? He didn't, uh, you, should, uh, you have IIT Delhi. He should have taken there. That's a very good institution. And the answer he gave was, he could not get into IIT Delhi, so we brought him into Stanford. This is a fact. Today, if you look at it, 32% of engineers globally are Indian. 28% of doctors all over the world are Indian, trained and educated in India. 16% of scientists all over the world are Indian. So Indian universities do not figure in the top, 20, top uh, ranking. Are we to be blamed? Or is it your ranking to be blamed? Dozens of presidents and CEOs of universities, multinational companies, 
whether it's University of California, San Diego, whether it's a Carnegie Mellon, whether it's at Stanford, University of Houston, the Sun Microsystem, the Google, you name it, they're all Indians trained at the IITs. So are we really bad? My question is no. We don't give a damn. We produce the best people and they go and find for themselves. What we miss in India, why do people have to leave India to express themselves the best? That ecosystem is what we need to do. That is where I think in today's world with the new information explosion that we are having, we are living in an unprecedented digital and, and knowledge. I won't use the word knowledge, I'll say information revolution. We are flooded with mountains of data. You know, data you can generate. Now data to become knowledge, which can be used by generations is a long journey it has to take. Data has to become information first. Information will then become knowledge and knowledge will then become wisdom, which you will pass it on to the next generation. Now this journey from data to wisdom is a very long journey, but we, we are living in that world where computers of tomorrow and even today can do and will do much better when it comes to knowledge based operations. Believe me, today we are looking at things which we could not even have done earlier. Look at the disruptions that, we, that are coming, disruptive thinking, disruptive in, inventions that are coming uh, almost every, every week in the world. The, I'll give you just a few examples. You know, many of us use the taxi Uber, Uber or Ola. You know, Uber is today the world's largest taxi company, largest taxi company. So you will think, oh my God, it must have a fleet of cars. It must have thousands and millions of cars. It does not own even a single car anywhere in the world. How difficult to understand. You don't even have a single car and yet you are the world's largest taxi company. You don't even have own a single square centimeter of property, yet you become the world's largest chain of hotel, Airbnb. When I go abroad, I don't stay in fancy hotels. I book an online stay in Airbnb. And these are nothing but uh, your room, my room, my home, home. Other, if I'm not living, I rent it out. So it's all on, on apps based. It's, you don't even know who the owner is. You don't even know who you are dealing with. You only are told that key is lying in that door at that base, pick it up and leave it. And tomorrow, if you think you can leave the place dirty and leave it, you had it. Nobody will allow you in Airbnb anymore because word will spread that this gentleman left a dirty place or this gentleman broke the utens utensils or disappeared with crockeries. That is the beauty of disruptive innovation. Not even a single square centimeter of property, yet it is the world's largest hotel chain. And I think the, the most disruptive innovator in the world today, in my opinion, is the Apple technology. All of us, many of us today have an Apple Apple uh, watch or an Apple Apple watch is a wonderful thing. It tells me after one hour time to get up and uh, walk around. Otherwise, you will not do your uh, complete your 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 exercise today. You know, Apple is today the world's the only company that has the largest market capitalization. And market cap is an indicator, is an index of how big you are, how powerful you are as an industry. Apple's market cap is running into trillion, two trillion plus, two plus trillion dollar. There's no comp competitor for Apple. No other market cap as big as Apple anywhere. The closest to Apple is again an IT company. I will not name it. And I, you may think that Apple makes uh, all these watches and, and, and cell phones and technologies and earphones and iPods and all kinds of things. No. It does not make a single uh, equipment at all, not even a single thing it manufactures. All it does, it innovates and creates intellectual property, which is translated into a product, not in California. California head of office is the largest RD, r and company for any company in the world in, 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 uh, in Southern California. But there they only create intellectual property. And that property is translated where? In places like China, in other places where they assemble based on small parts. You'll be surprised to know 30% of the Apple parts that goes into your Apple comes from India. They are made in India. They are sent to China 
now they are making one in near um, near karnataka near bangalore near mysore actually the company that's also making apple parts so they all assemble together and and sell it so you know the cost of an app i know the figure for apple 6 <clears throat> i don't know the figure for apple 12 in apple 6 when i bought apple 6 several years ago it was about 50000 rupees and 55000 rupees and they don't give you a single penny discount not even a single nap as a discount and this apple apple 6 that i i i bought the cost was whatever i paid the cost apple paid to the chinese manufacturer was just about 6000 rupees and the actual cost for the chinese manufacturer was, was only about 12000 rupees and the actual cost to the chinese manufacturer assembler was 6000 rupees so they were very happy they are making twice the amount labor was cheap and you are and the product numbers of volumes are very large so you are making big money very quickly and what was apple selling it for 50000 rupees imagine this is what is known as disruptive innovation and that is what i think we need to, we need to worry about it and tomorrow you won't be surprised if the cars tomorrow tomorrow does not mean uh, 2021 it could be 2022 it could be 2025 the cars that you'll see in the market will not be made will not be made by volvo audi and and mercedes and, and volkswagen they will carry their body parts they will carry their parts but they will be named as apple amazon google cars mark my word is going to happen it will be just like apple apple does not make a single thing but made uh, the parts are made from different manufacturers all over the world and you think you're buying an apple phone because it was made by apple no it is not made, nothing to do with apple manufacturing that manufacturing is done thousands of miles away in china but the mind for making it and that's where the cars would be look at what's happening today the disruptive innovation in the car industry because of covid 19 covid 19 which has which has impacted all of us in a big way the car industry did not in fact no industry could do well at all otherwise it was expected that there will be a big revolution even today have you at least i never thought that time will come when i'll sitting on my iphone will order a cab it will tell me where the cab fellow is it will tell me his number it will alert me that standing below In, uh, at my gate and then i'll go and it will drop me and my wife will monitor where it where i am right now which how far i've reached and once i reach it will it will message will come your husband has been dropped just imagine unbelievable this is what is what we are we are doing today but disruptions for tomorrow will be mostly linked to biology linked to human life because unlike as i said in the beginning many other things are governed by established laws and rules of physics and chemistry and mathematics formulas but biology there are no laws i have just about 3 more minutes so i'll just conclude by also had many things to talk about so i'll i'll just i have let me just see just just one second let me check where is my daughter right now oh so she would be landing in about half an hour plus so i i professor gupta can i take a little more time yeah 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 please go ahead please go ahead not not a problem please go ahead i, I plan Lovely. please go ahead i plan to leave but all but my daughter's flight is really delayed so i think i have time oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead i can take but i'll disrupt everybody else is functioning my real lecture but let me just to make a few more things which i thought i must talk about it especially you have given me an opportunity to talk so biology will dominate tomorrow's uh, disruption all everybody will be looking at for example one idea i already thought i already suggested that can we make a prediction how good would be a, the vaccine how can we make a prediction will when will the next pandemic come and will this be worse than covid 19 and if yes to these are these are not easy to make look at the look at the variables that you have to look at it un unimaginable you know lately i have been puzzled with a very new thing although i work on tuberculosis and lately i have been working also on covid we have uh, uh, some uh, interesting observations on covid 
uh, including its biology and also including uh, some two new uh, US repurposed drugs against COVID. <clears throat> we hope to uh, take this forward. Uh, we are in that stage right now. Uh, but very simple question. And this question came about three years ago to my mind. When I saw my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and also one more thing, my, my young friends, you know, family is very important. However, you climb up, you know, a wonderful example of a, of a child was trying to fly a, a kite and the father was on the rooftop. Basan Panchmi Hota, we all, we all, I have, I have flown a kite myself and I know how much fun it is. And then the, after some time, because of the strength of the, of the dhaga, it could not go beyond a certain height. So the child was very desperate. He says, Dad, why is it not able to go far? I wanted to reach still higher. He said, you want to reach higher? Okay. He snaps the, 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 the thread. And the kite went higher, higher, till it disappeared completely. You don't know where it went. And the child was very disappointed. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I don't know where it went. I wish I had seen. Then the father said, my son, Life is like that. The farther you climb, don't get disconnected from your roots. The higher you go, stay connected to your roots. If you disconnect from your roots, you will be lost. You will regret later on, oh my God, where have I landed? You don't know anything what happened to that kite. Same thing will happen about you. So stay firmly connected to your relatives. Stay firmly connected to your roots. Such a wonderful, simple story, a real story. And that is what brings me to my, you know, my uh, value system that we got in our family. My father and mother lived with me. We are three brothers and one sister, but most of the time they spent with us. My mother-in-law, father-in-law, they had five children, but again, they lived with us. And I had the, we, me and my wife had the fortune to, to take care of them till their last days. And we were there to see them breathe the last day of their life. They were admitted to the hospital. My mother-in-law, I could see her, her ECG going up and down till it became flat. And then the doctor told me, she's no more. Do you want me to revive? She was already in coma for quite some time, quite a few days. And we said, no, no need to revive. Then the doctor said, she's dead. And that is what I realized. What happened? The body remains, everything remains. But the doctor says she's dead. So the soul has left the body. So what is soul? And that is what led me thinking. And I'm really thinking these days a lot on what is life? How do you define life? I may be wrong, but I, I'm beginning to think that human body is like a large hardware of a computer. You have a computer if there is no operating system, computer will not function. You can get the Apple, you can get the Google, you can get anything, but it will not function till you have an operating system. What is this operating system? We call it, you can I operating system or you call Google operating system or you call Mac, whatever name you give, Android operating system. I think a similar thing is there in our body. We know much about our, actually we don't know much at all, but we know something about the hardware that our body is. But we know zero. We know nothing. And I perhaps will never get to know what is our life operating system. I call it LOS. What happens suddenly it, this system goes away. We say Atma nikal gai. Dehant ho gaya. Shareer se Atma kareer ka nizhan ho gaya. What was that operating system? What was that Atma? What was that Ru? What was that soul? What is it that, that eventually was the factor that converted a perfectly normal body into a, we don't even call it by name after that. We say body ko niche do. We don't say Mrs. So ko niche do. Everything changes just by the life operating system, not being part of your body. That is a big question that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to put my thought on. Let me now just say a few things, uh, just the last, I think, which I would like to say to my 
my young students there. And that is, you know, you'll have a lot of things to do in life. You will be doing many things and I'm, I'm sure many of you would do. Remember one thing, I talked about the life in its metaphorical thing. What is life? They say it's from B to D, birth to death. That is what is life all about. But what's between B and D? All of us know it. It's C. So what is C? And that is what I would like you, all of you to ponder about it. C, which is between birth and death, is a choice. Our life is a matter of choice. Live well and it will never go wrong. Life is the art of drawing without an eraser. That's the beauty of it. You have to draw because there will be no eraser for you to redraw it. Don't wait for the perfect moment to take the moment and make it perfect. Just take the moment and make it perfect. Enjoy your own life without comparing it with that of another. And if you have to compare, compare with somebody who is lesser endowed with than you. And then you will feel thankful that the Almighty, whether you believe in Almighty or believe in Karma or believe in whatever, Bhagwan ya Ashirvad, to unke wajah se aap itna aage gaye, aapke jo colleagues hain. When I compare myself with my, with my colleagues, I have all the time reasons to thank the Almighty. The people who want to stay in your life will always find a way. Remember that. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond to it. Expect nothing and you will never be disappointed. Disappointment comes because I expected that I did something for this gentleman. I did him a favor and look, he has not responded. He has not done anything for me. Do good things and forget about it. I try to do this in my own in my own small life. I have found that if you love life, life will love you back. Don't call the world dirty because you forgot to clean your own glasses. Your glasses are dirty. So you call, think the world is dirty. The world is not dirty. Some people come in your life as blessings. Others come in your life as lessons. Those you think are not blessings, don't take them negative. They are lessons for you to learn. A simple hello could lead to a million things. As long as you live, keep learning how to live. You know, I'll conclude by a, a very simple fact of life. You know, a, 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 an infant, a baby, smiles many times per day, 100 or close to 100 times per day. As the baby grows older, then smile is less. As the boy or a girl becomes adult, smile is still less. And you know what it does when you smile? Your muscle movement actually activates the complexity of the human brain and does good things for you. That leads to your development. It's difficult to say because you have not you are not developing anymore, or maybe you will develop more because you smile more. But people believe in laughter therapy with success, with the degree of confidence. So I think even if you have nothing to do, just smile at people. Smile for what they are. Even if they do they, they, they frown at you, I got your point. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here to listen to me. I've taken enough time. And I leave the last seven, eight minutes or 10 minutes maybe for any questions people may have. Some other time I can talk about some other personal experiences and also some other lessons for, for life. Yeah, so it was so overwhelming. I'm so grateful to you. Friends, I will not take a minute more of the time that actually belongs to you. So if any one of you wishes to ask any question about personal, professional, uh, institutional life, uh, go ahead. Just unmute yourself and ask a question. Or if you want to make a 
a disagreeing remark that it will be even better. I mean, professors always like someone who disagrees with them. <laughs> and also, you can always write to me. My, you do a Google and you'll get my mail ID. It's very simple, syedhasnan at gmail.com. Yeah. Just write to me and I normally respond to every single mail. So anybody has any question? Yes, sir. Can, sir. Go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, uh, thanks a lot for this inspiring session. We are uh, really inspired by the talk, sir. Thank sir, you. Uh, yeah, I have this one one thing to, uh, you know, uh, say, sir, that uh, uh, as you said, sir, about the uh, viruses and all stuff, sir, sir, we think that uh, there is a possible way to, uh, sir, you know, uh, carry over the mutations. So, sir, we can uh, have a possible way wherein we can work on to it, sir. I have I not under that. understood your question well, but if I, if I, from whatever little I've been able to understand is, can we manage with the mutation? Is that what you are trying to say? Yes, sir. Can we, sir? Yeah, the question is a good question. We don't know that yet. But because the mutation is very close to where the antibodies are binding and neutralizing the virus, there is a, a, a discerning fear. There is an, a clear fear that this may make the vaccines ineffective. Whether that will actually happen or not, we don't have the answer to that yet. Dr. Hasnan, I will follow up with this question that in agriculture, what we do when we have climatic fluctuations, sometimes it is early rain, sometimes it is late rain, sometimes it is drought is early part, drought is later part, too much of rain sometime, and uh, farmers have to cope with it. So what do they do? They grow multiple crops at the same time in the same field, with the result that some will fail if it is too early, too much of rain early. Some will fail if it is too much of rain late, and so on. So out of seven, eight crops, some crop would survive. We don't know which one, because we don't know what climate will be. So in some sense of buffering antibodies, that means the antibodies that may also go through changes dynamically and not remain yep. frozen in the design of the protein that is there um, that, as a weird thought. What do you think about that? It's not weird, Professor Gupta. It looks like you have done some reading of biology. I'm amazed at your, at your understanding. It's really amazing. This is exactly what I, we and many others are talking about in the literature. We are calling it as a trained immunity. You know, when we, we say trained immunity means I took a vaccine against a particular thing. For example, the trained immunity is coming in a big way in the BCG. Every Indian child born at birth, he is given a shot of, of a BCG to protect against uh, TB. It does not protect lifelong, but it does protect up to a certain age. But what it does, it also leaves traces of some antigens which the body feels could be valuable antigen, may not be for TB, but for others. And tomorrow when that antigen comes, when that pathogen comes, the body mounts a response. And In fact, people are saying that BCG, people vaccinated with BCG have a greater resistance to coronavirus. Today, there are about a two dozen countries, two dozen clinical trials with BCG, two dozen including in Australia, in Europe, in Brazil, in many places. Why? Because they know there is something known as trained immunity. One of the biggest questions people are asking, including us, is we have crossed a 10 million figure of a number of cases of COVID in the country. We have 130, billion, 130 million people, of which if you look at the number of cases and the severity of disease is very less. Has this something to do with the BCG? In fact, a paper recently published that has received a lot of good uh, uh, attractive citations is we have compared countries which had been vaccinated with BCG and compared countries that never saw BCG. Countries such as Sweden, countries which are vaccinated such as Africa and India. The, the, the case number of cases of, of uh, COVID and the disease outcome, there is big difference. Sweden had the largest number of deaths compared to the number of infections. Countries like India, our death rate is still much, much less. Of course, you, you have to believe that the data from death rates in India are absolutely correct. 
But even if you leave that much, people may not be reporting uh, correctly that they died of COVID because of the stigma and others are, which are being getting attached to it. But there is a big gap. And that gap tells us that countries which had already exposure to BCG are getting a little robust, are getting a little more uh, resistant to, 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 uh, uh, to, to COVID-19. Is this a reality? And there are clinical trials, including a, a, another another pathogen that we uh, not a pathogen, it was a bacteria that uh, we uh, myself and my colleagues decided to name it. It was discovered in India by Professor Pran Talwar. Pran Talwar was a immunologist at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Then he moved and established the National Institute of Immunology, where I worked for a good number of years. And there we decided to work more and sequence this bacteria completely. And we named it as Mycobacterium indicus, indicus because it was discovered in India, Pran, Pranai, Pranai because Pran Talwar discovered it, and Nai because it was characterized in National Institute of Immunology, NII. And this, this bacteria also does a kind of a trained immunity to fight against uh, leprosy. It, and today, if you see the leprosy cases in India, it has come down. And you would you know why it has come down? Because of this bacteria being used as a vaccine, not against TB, but against leprosy. In fact, one clinical trial has been used against TB, and it turned out to be that uh, at least in category two patients, this was very successful. There were also trials with this MIP bacteria against uh, other things in papilloma in human papilloma, in, uh, in other psoriasis, in other, other unrelated uh, human disorders, all because of the likely reason of this bacteria providing trained immunity. Cadilla Laboratory, Cadilla Pharmaceuticals in, uh, in uh, Ahmedabad, your own place, is, is working on, on a COVID vaccine, which is nothing but heat killed MIP bacteria. That is what you have asked the question. This is a very relevant, I'm, I'm quite, quite. Uh, I want to salute you that you have such <laughs> understanding you. of something which we thought we biologists only know. A person uh, who has- else, uh, Any student would like to ask before we wrap up and then give you, uh, my, uh, Shilpi is already here. She would also um, like to interact with you. So please, yes, anybody? Uh, Want you to also, ask sir, any uh, sir uh, I had one more. Uh, uh, I, I actually had one more suggestion which I wanted to ask if uh, it can work or not, sir. Go ahead quickly, sir. Uh, as you said about the mutation, what happens is basically there is a change in the genomic sequence of the RNA of the coronavirus. That's why the mutations are happening because of the uh, external conditions which are getting faced uh, country to country, sir. Right, sir. That is the basic cause for the mutation right now. We can say that. I so, say partly say yes and partly say no. See, one thing is for sure. Of course, you're very right. We know we have different countries. In fact, one of the papers that we have published uh, talks about the different kinds of mutations as a function of geography. There are mutations that occur in, in a particular geographic regions which are not to be found in other geographic regions. So yes, that sir. is correct. But geography does not mean only physical geography. Geography also means your own internal geography. In our body, there are 10 times more DNA by bacteria that live in your body, which are absolutely harmless bacteria. We call it microbiome. So that microbiome differs based on what kind of food you eat, what kind of water you drink, what kind of conditions you live. So you are partly correct when you are assessment, when you're making this assessment. Um, sir, uh, so uh, by saying this, I wanted to uh, add on to this suggestion as a suggestion, sir, uh, which I wanted to ask whether it can happen or not. Is it possible or not that if there is mutations occurring naturally, why can't we, uh, sir, make such a changes in the genomic sequence in the virus where the live uh, virus testings are happening into the laboratories? And we change the genomic sequence such that it can bind with the uh, viruses uh, spike proteins, sir. And it can engulf the whole thing and, uh, you know, sir, uh, target on the uh, virus itself, sir. Uh, Lakshal is your name, right? 
yes sir lakshy you have a wonderful thought lot of lot of um, uh, variables are there and i don't think we understand the variables today at all particularly when it comes to how the virus interacts with the human uh, the cellular host cellular system the, the immune mechanism that governs host pathogen interaction they're barely going to be beginning to be understood particularly in the context of uh, coronavirus so it's a, it's a good thought in principle yes it should, it will be good thing to try that but there are a lot of uh, of uh, missing links and unless we know more about the missing links i don't think we can even reach there yes, dr okay. asnan before we close i want to just mention to the for the information of our student participants that it is not only the outstanding students you have produced but also the university you led got the best university award uh, hyderabad university was the second one to get the best university award and then you were member of the visitors committee to select the best scientist and the best university so you have not only achieved excellence but you have also helped in nurturing i remember uh, we had a colleague uh, of astrophysicist and there was so much of discussion at that time in the meeting and uh, it was uh, because of your presence and because of the a citation 3000 citations that he had already and the nobel laureate actually had nobel nobel speeches don't have citation but in this case the nobel laureate had cited his work as a building block of his own work so yes, we yes. were able to recognize uh, that uh, colleague scientist so i think it is very important that while we can achieve excellence in our own life but helping others achieve excellence and helping unfold the potential of others is even more credible which you have achieved there is one last question satyendra singh has satyendra go, go ahead please quickly he has typed it can you read it in the chat drop sir i'll i'll read the chat one second good morning good yeah, afternoon go ha go ahead satyendra sir my question is sir why in case of hepatitis b case that the nucleoside and nucleotide analogs and interferon alpha is been widely used for the treatment method but it is not a curative method the reason is, is that the answer is very simple we are not dealing with the virus which is like hbv we are dealing with the most intelligent pathogen humanity has ever seen hbv is still curable hbv is still treatable hbv has drugs that can take care of it but this is a very very smart pathogen very smart pathogen so we have to learn more about this pathogen it is not as simple as hbv thank you thank you so much thank you so much i must say that uh, it has been a great privilege as manish just thank mentioned you, we have been all blessed not just the participants student participants i consider myself to have absorbed so much of wisdom not just yours but your parents your father's wisdom and your family wisdom because uh, this is a tradition this is our collective heritage so now you no more are the only uh, let us say the inheritor of that wisdom you have shared that with all of us we become party we become claimant on that wisdom thank you so much dr sir thank you so much and thank i'm you. sure you your daughter's delay was for the purpose it yeah. didn't happen by chance <laughs> and please rush please rush so that you can receive her and uh, wish you all the best and we continue to hope that in future this also we will have the advantage and privilege of your presence a uh, more relaxed uh, encounter with our students and you know provoking them and listening to them and uh, you have really uh, in some sense charted out a pathway pathway of not just goals but also values not just values but also meanings that uh, rootedness provides in life thank you so much dr sir we are very grateful thank you once again and th thank you for inviting me to to listen to these three wonderful presentations the milk presentation and of course the home experiment of hot turmeric milk versus cold turmeric milk we have always been taking hot turmeric milk didn't realize that it really actually there's a basis <laughs> for doing it wonderful great thank you so much and you have a, a blank check from me any time you want me professor gupta i am with i am there thank Any... you so much thank you so thank much you thank you so much thank I'll you i'll have to leave now if you permit yeah yeah please please i realize that many thanks professor snan thank, thank you. you thank you dr manish thank you okay uh megha sir we are yet to receive feedback from the students on the okay web. so maybe you should go ahead with that yes 
so uh, students can you uh, share your feedback on the webinar and anything any critical view on this yes prachi hello hello am i audible hello yeah yeah you are audible but uh, yes, the yeah, student guys please start your Achha, manish uh, wait, wait wait mega manish is uh, leaving and uh, shilpi has uh, joined so shilpi will carry on from here manish thank you so much uh, for being with us today morning and as you can see there's a lot of energy that i am feeling so this energy we have to multiply and uh, we want to amplify the household experiment issue more in next base because we realize that if constraints are there then the constraints also give an opportunity and i'm ha happy that dr hasnain liked the household experiments i mean these kind of experiments will make make uh, the research culture to permeate in our families people will now that become more curious and even our families will be very happy to see that biology experiments are being done simple experiments are being done to test our assumptions so this scientific temper that we talk about uh, will get developed much more deeply in our culture in our society if more experiments were done at home there are few more which mega uh, can you get can you get one presentation of that uh, peel and uh, the things that manure experiment that was done can you get that experiment presented just one more Manish, just listen to one more, and then uh, uh, this will be interesting to you, and then we can start the feedback. Man Shilpi is all right. You are not in rush. I'm there. Shilpi, Shil Shilpi is okay. One more, I wanted just before Manish leaves, and yeah, just one more presentation on the uh, experiment that students did at home. So, Prachi, are you able to present it? Prachi Sharma. Uh, Professor Gupta, I got the gist. I think uh, that's a wonderful uh, effort Chief. and uh, no, wonderful that. inspiration. I think uh, that should also form, form the basis of the uh, proposals under basic way uh, and then the next course of action. If we get a presentation, not right now, Maybe we can send it over. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Send it. kindly do that. I will have a look at that. And uh, you know, the last Gathi, there was a mention that we should do ten times scale up. So I had a chat with Renu. She will talk to you, or you can also chat with her. So idea was that maybe we should uh, magnify, amplify the base and the Gathi a little more, at least in the current program, because new program may have restriction, but current one have no. So we can probably do more of these and bring more students into the fold, so that they can get inspired by. Some of the most eminent faculty, because such faculty members at one place only this can offer. You know, no, no university can offer. Absolutely, that's that's. <laughs> I mean, that is. I think that we must all take pride in, isn't it? Absolutely. We are getting the best of all the CSIR, DBT, uh, university system, JNU, whatever. We are getting the top scientists and scholars to converge in a platform for three weeks, and you can see this time it has been. May appear crowded, but we also got Ayurveda. We also got other traditions, so that the students get a very that's, concentrated. That's door. the USP of Professor Gupta. <laughs> no, I think this is something nobody that else we are can together doing that. But you, uh, if nobody says no to us. That is very true. I mean, nobody had said no. Everybody had found time, and we could get people from the top labs. So at least they are I they think, are touching uh, the lives of these young sir, people. Sir, the students are also listening. I think uh, we must. Uh, students can take this as a lesson and an inspiration. That person who works with a passion draws several like-minded people together, and uh, that becomes a uh, that wo karwa, you know, deep se deep jata gaya, karwa bata gaya. It is like that. So I think. Uh, the very fact that this program has taken up this shape uh, is just because it has been led by you, Professor Gupta, and of mm -hmm. course uh, uh, the team behind facilitates. Shilpi is there, 
and your uh, Srishti team is there. So it's a collective effort, but it requires a champion like you to navigate it further. For the, uh, we are very happy to have been associated with it and to be able to facilitate it to this level. And as we discussed, I think there is a potential that it can further scale. So thank with you, that, sir, you. I will take your leave. Okay. And uh, right. Shilpi is here uh, to yeah. navigate it further. So Shilpi, if you have no time concern, then we will have two presentations. One on the air filter that we, some students have tried to use MOS. And another one is on manure, various kinds of bio waste that they have used in their home. Mega, are these the two main presentations that we have, which are experiment based? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I can ask them to make a very brief presentation, both of them. Okay. And then we have the feedback session on. Is that right? I'm there. Ah, so I want Shilpi to take this uh, because, you know, this is the first time we have tried this. And I'm so happy that students have built their own incubator at home. They have treatments. They have done experiments, designed them well, observed them well. Maybe next time we'll do better. But at least I'm happy that this culture is emerging. Uh, and we want this culture to grow at a school level at some stage, of course, right from young age, the students must learn to do experiments at home. So go ahead, Megha, please. Back yes, to you. Please. Okay, sir. So, uh, Shashwat, you are ready with your presentation on air purifier? My name okay. is Sahil. Okay, Sahil. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Just a minute. My mind is loading. Uh, I have a network issue here. <clears throat> yeah. So, is it visible to all of you? Yeah. So. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for, and once again, uh, uh, Professor Sir, uh, Anil Sir. And uh, actually, I'm the part of a, like, I'm not part of a non, uh, I'm a part of med non medical student. And uh, I, this is new to for me, like uh, learning this in biotechnology. And uh, we started this thing. So, uh, like, our topic was the air PF and capturing carbon. And uh, that there is a quotation for me and be as a part of the solution, not the part of the pollution. So let's just start with the problem. Like how do we analyze those things? Uh, these stats that shows that the emission was from the industrial, like the 75% work was from the industrial uh, um, pollutions and then 15% from the crop burning and the 10% from the Diwali works. And these are the all things that was the stacks but found in recently. But uh, now Delhi government has recently developed a Pusha bio uh, decomposer, which will be helpful for reducing the stock crop burning. <clears throat> Uh, the problems were there, like the nine out of the 10 people breathe air polluted air in the worldwide and the peoples are bound to live with the distressed situation. Even if uh, most of the people breathe poison and India shares 1.3% 1, 1 of the 8.4% of the death caused due to the pollution and which kills 7 million of people every year. So this was this thing that we tried to develop. This was the air purifier device, which will be installed in the outdoors uh, areas, which will be using some kind of filters. And even we were researching for the filters, like the bio filters. Our economic efficiency was that we will be uh, like uh, installing this kind of filter. But this is the prototype of that filter. And uh, using those filters like HEPA filter, carbon filter, we can uh, purify the air. But our motive was to like how we can use the bio filters and the Tulsi. And Tulsi was the great point for the us to how uh, Tulsi will be helpful for reducing the carbon emissions. Uh, here is the video of that. If I can, possible, I can share you the video of that. Uh, like, what is the thing? We have developed our own uh, prototype and it is, or uh, we can also manual directly monitor those things in our EQI. Uh, with that, with your permission, can I share the like play the video? Yes, please, please. It will just show you the like what are the things like uh, we have integrated. 
So yeah. Uh, this was the outlet of the system, uh, which will be air will be uh, out, uh, will be coming from this area. Uh, this was the power analyzer, uh, which will be using in this system. These were the internet filters. <coughs> So this was the video like which will be showcasing like what are the filters and what are the uh, like uh, sensors that we have used. Uh, but our main uh, like now we are researching for the how we can use this filter for the like bio filters and the Tulsi filter like developing our own filters. Even though Tulsi is already installed like Tulsi is planted in uh, in the Taj Mahal area in which Tulsi helps to reduce the carbon emissions. Uh, as well, uh, it is packed with the many health benefits and including the treating uh, coughing and the improving the immunity of the uh, lowering your risk of acidity and the inflammation. And talking about the biofilters, when it is applied to the air filtration and the purification, uh, biofilter use, use the microorganism to remove the air pollution. The air flows through the packed bed and the pollutant transferred into a thin biofilm on the surface of the packing material. Uh, which helps to purify the air and most of the time the microorganism including the bacteria and the fungi are immobilized in the biofilm which degrade the pollutants this was the plan like we are still researching on that and uh, i need help from the from the, this background people because uh, from i am actually a technical person uh, i'm i don't know like those things but still i'm researching for that i need some research with people with, who can collab with us uh, <clears throat> So as this was the like we about to do this was the part of the servant maintenance and the uh, technician that we were what was the plan, and uh, it was in the it is actually installed in the our now as of now in the pilot tested in our Bhubaneswar. Uh, we tested in our uh, with the collaboration with BMC in our nearby areas. It was successfully tested and we got uh, we can purify approximately to uh, uh, two. Uh, to uh, like the area of 2,000 or 400 square foot at 30 minutes uh, using, but those are filters that are used from like uh, already made the HEPA filter and the carbon filter are used. But in planning, we are planning, we are going next future, we are in future planning and we are planning to install the bio filters, which will be helpful for us. And it will be cost uh, efficient, cost efficient uh, because HEPA filter and this carbon filter are very costly and they are not reusable but uh, using the biofilter will be very uh, beneficial for us <clears throat> so this uh, like my team is the rm squad and uh, we first analyzed it what is the uh, we analyzed the problem how the pollution is uh, like like uh, it is causing the infrastructure of our uh, human uh, kind and uh, we try to analyze those things after that we find the solution of that proper what we can do and what are the things that can be done and uh, after our impact is that enhancing the health of the care, uh, health uh, healthcare sector culture reform to keep the surroundings clean and encouraging the making the india concept this is the entire thing uh, we will try to make it as soon as possible for that to, so in future uh, it will be helpful for every human kind that's it i will thank you if you guys any have any queries you can ask very good very good it was a joint project or a single sahil Sir, it was a uh, joint project with my team members along with, uh, we are working in a Cisco Thinkubator incubation center. So where, we'll where? Start. Cisco Thinkubator. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Well, everybody is ready? Or someone wants to, uh, you know, discuss their ideas or 
sir uh, actually uh, one more thing uh, if i need i need some help from from the uh, this bio uh, for the help in the developing this bio filters uh, if possible well you can come to work in our lab that's always possible mega will make it possible for you okay sir and we have a provision that if once the covid situation in uh improves uh, we can allow many of you to come back for a week we had discussed that earlier so for hands on experiments those who have developed good protocols so mega is there anyone else there otherwise you just start yeah. the briefing the manual the whether the team that did manual experiment they want to share anything orally no i think they are not replying me all right then go ahead go ahead with the feedback so uh, students now time for the feedback please uh, go ahead uh, ma'am uh, i would like to share uh, my points uh, as i am a engineering student so this is this field is totally different for me and it uh, it was very uh, like uh, a very learning point i i learned some things i have never knew and uh, that was the thing i really liked but if it is possible it, if 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 there was not covid we will like to it was if possible we can do some hands on project it will be great for us that will be better others please uh, uh, go I ahead i mean we will not respond to any suggestion just now mega will give a consolidated response at the end yeah so mega you can keep writing and then you can respond to all the suggestions together yeah so and good afternoon if you want to respond to anyone you can also do that shall be so next please so good afternoon sir and madam so myself rahul so from uh, near to tirupattur district so from basically so i am in rural area so this is my first program i have attended 21 days like this extraordinary webinar so each and every day i have learned um, so many things so which will help to my projects and my career also so on many scientists it's not a quite easy task to organize all the scientists so different places and give a deliver a wonderful lecture so those lectures it is not uh, simply we cannot able to say that it is a good extraordinary so it's a uh, wordless so uh, once again i thank uh, all the team members and maham ma'am so for their cons consistent work so thanks for giving me to this opportunity to attend this program so if it is in uh, uh, hands on try this is not a covid time as my friend said so it is not uh, not a covid time means uh, we'll get more knowledge and more interaction and more live sessions so that would be more improve uh, will our career so thank you thank you anand Good afternoon, everyone. It has been an amazing experience with this. Um, so from the day one, the starting class of Anisha to the end, it has been an amazing experience of knowledge, and we have been gaining every day uh, something or the other. So uh, we also get connected with the people from different parts of India. Um, so it has been a wonderful experience i am looking forward to the hands on training hands on training so you get more exposure as an undergraduate student it has been a wonderful experience thank you good afternoon everyone i am lok joshpura and i would like to share my feedback as well the whole session uh, it was really really informative and inspiring we came across uh, many many different types of uh, you know uh, brilliant minds who shared their views and who shared their points and really it uh, has uh, shifted a lot of things towards uh, our mindset into scientific thinking and we look forward for hands on training as well as we uh i would like to share this thing that uh, in these 21 days it was really awesome connecting with the people with the fellow students and 
it has given me a team sir. so i'm definitely thankful to srishti and uh, byrak for this it was an awesome experience thank you चलो बोलो यहां पे खाना खाओगे या टिफिन ले लेते हो ऑफिस हां शैल आई नेम और यू विल कंटिन्यू द लंच रूम एंड अदर्स हु वांटेड टू गिव फीडबैक गुड यार any critical graphon ma'am yes. graphon ma'am graphon sir uh, i'm nilan shogara from bansal institute lucknow like i'm here to present a feedback on the webinar conducted from december 1 for the next 3 weeks like in the beginning of the webinar we were introduced uh, with the entrepreneurship and innovations like in uh, there i learned how and why the future goods and services can be discovered and how it can help in the economic growth and the development of uh, various geographic entities like from villages to the region even to the countries following the workshop uh, in the second week we were introduced to the vast field of research like i personally get to know a lot of things related to my research like i am thankful to the sisti team for organizing such an educational and fruitful webinar as i mentioned earlier in front of anil sir that uh, we are guided to focus on the grassroots practices and with this idea i am working on my project and will bring a great change to the society and the environment like thank you ma'am thank you sir प्लीज शेयर सम मूवमेंट ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन और फ्रस्ट्रेशन एज द केस मे बी इफ यू फेल दैट एट मूवमेंट यू आर फ्रस्ट्रेटेड बिकॉज things were not to your expectation or you thought they were too complex you couldn't make sense of them you can also mention that good afternoon sir this is nitish kumar from jays college from tamil nadu so the workshop was was excellent from my point of view i have learned so many things not to my core but uh, a new things which are not uh, learned before sir after the uh, uh, from the second third assignment i have uh, carried out uh, an experiment in my form coconut form to get rid of the beetles using a uh, normal oil cake, uh, oil cake that was a one of the best experiment i have done in my uh, agricultural field and uh, from the workshop the two many things i have uh, taken for my project it has helped me a lot to uh, finish my project by excel sir thanks for the opportunity um sir may audible yes um i'm hariharan from bangalore sir and i think one of the key takeaways from this series of Uh, sessions for me was uh, the grassroots innovations so i am from a metropolitan uh, city and i've never come across this term called grassroots innovation before until applying for bis um yeah so that is that has been a, a whole new world for me like i've been looking into a lot of things the uh, honey bee uh, public uh, थैंक यू मेघा
Mega, you are muted. You are muted. You have to unmute Mega. Next, please. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, I am Satyendra Singh from Lucknow. Sir, firstly, I would like to thank you and the whole Sushi team for organizing such an influential and motivating workshop with the ample of knowledge. And because sir, this webinar has been very influential to me as being an undergraduate, we get very less opportunities to interact to such scholars, scientists, and research workers. And uh, it has been a wonderful journey of a 20 days long, in which uh, I especially learned that how to implement science in such a way that uh, it may benefit our society. And uh, I learned, I personally learned a very beautiful lesson from Megha Ma'am also, that uh, how to coordinate and manage a teamwork. And so at last, I would like to especially thank you to motivate us and to motivate me, influence us to form a bond with our, our grassroots practices. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Sir, myself, Pratik Shaletoya. So I want to say that that uh, I was very yeah, much was so appreciated by Dr. Amit Asthana. He, hmm. uh, he just uh, wanted to say, Sir, uh, can I continue in Hindi? Yes, tell me. No matter what. If you don't understand one, please somebody should help those students who can't understand Hindi. Sir, I mean, somebody I haven't type, seen... Somebody can type on the chat. Go ahead, I will type it. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, I haven't, see, I haven't seen a person like him that uh, he was... I uh, mean, he interestingly showing his work. He was very much uh, uh, appreciated. I mean, he was showing his work that uh, biosensors or whatever he told me, sir, he was very amazing. And, uh, sir, you also learned a lot of things from you, sir. Like, uh, sir, farmers, we don't know how to do it. Mostly, people don't know how to do it. Sir, we do so much. So, sir, we learned all these things in the grassroots practices. I think we need to take more of them. So, sir, uh, in my mind, the idea was that हम लोग एज अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी हम लोग उनके लिए कुछ कर सकते हैं लाइक सर सीमैप में काफी चीजें सर होती हैं फार्मर्स से रिलेटेड भी तो सर जहां जहां हम लोगों को अपॉर्चुनिटी मिले आई थिंक कि हम लोगों को उनकी चीजों को उनकी एक्टिविटीज को आगे लेकर जाना ही चाहिए तो सर ये सारी चीजें यहां पर सीखी हैं सर बहुत अच्छा सर यहां का मतलब हम लोगों को लगा है सो सर थैंक यू वेरी गुड प्रतीक्षा आई एम हैप्पी दैट यू सेड दिस बिकॉज़ दैट इज वन ऑफ द पर्पस we will try to get you the book on grassroot innovation mega you can send to uh, all the participants uh, of this a copy of the book as a gift from our side mm -hmm. uh, particularly because uh, this will help them to understand the movement better and they will also be able to uh, translate some of the ideas into practice much better so we can do that we can post it to them with their certificates later on Yes, sir. So we and we can do that for other batches. Anybody else, please? I'm happy that you are feeling uh, not only responsible but also enthused about linking with the community needs. In fact, new education policy has a very strong chapter on how to connect higher education with the communities. And I'm happy that we are able to implement that goal of the new education policy through base through BIREC supported and DBT supported initiative and platform. So. This is a very practical way. Other institutions might still be thinking of, but we have a very practical way of bringing the knowledge of the society and the knowledge of the scholars together. Next, please. And sir, sir, I want to also say that that uh, sir, we are so much more excited, hai, sir. When we come hands-on training, par aayenge, sir, uh, we want to meet you. We want to meet Megha, ma'am. Sure, so, sure, 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 sure. Yes, sir. Ah, absolutely. And night, you will have to work. Yes, sir. No issue. That I already told them, sir. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they fed up for uh, after listening so many lectures, and I would I was like, uh, you have to work twenty four seven here. Uh, uh, that's very true. And Mega has been with you on every single day from morning till night. Yeah. I'm so happy that I mean, imagine you have to hear, but she also heard every single session. She was present in every single session. So I really appreciate her commitment and her effort and to keep your attention focused requires a lot of energy and uh, yes go ahead please 
anybody uh, else yes hello sir uh, good morning sir mudiraj uh, uh, good morning uh, uh, to uh, uh, srishti team and good morning ma'am and our dear uh, participate so i am saying uh, in short short words so what i uh, have learned in this uh, whole session i mean in this uh, uh, workshop so i am mainly inspired on the grassroots practice already i shared uh, before so and validation where the farmer people is using the traditional knowledge and also the srishti lab already working on this grassroots practices and conducting the sod yatra every years so uh, so thank you again for give the opportunity to attend in this workshop thank you sir 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 i have one question okay. sir why after the news that there are so many initiatives being taken by the organizations government and institutes then to why are india is lagging behind in biotechnology in comparison to rest of the world sorry why are we lagging behind did you feel no in by i can tell you when byrak was set up we did a study of all the patents filed by indians in us on in biotechnology and one of the argument that i had made in the document was that the gap between the global benchmarks global knowledge and the indian knowledge was the least in case of biotechnology you take any discipline of science and technology exception is space that is a uh, strategic sector so i'm not taking that into account but in any other sector if you look at science and engineering the biotechnology is one area where the global standards and the indian standard are very close so where gap is very limited so i don't think that we should I, we should make a statement like this that india is lagging behind not very much when it comes to biology yes in other disciplines we are and in many other disciplines we are lagging behind far more but in biotechnology we are reasonably good i mean you saw just now heard about dr hasnain's paper he got the highest honor of germany just like uh, french legion of honor he got the highest honor of germany for his work i mean he is one of the most decorated scientists internationally if you have posted his cv and mega will send uh, send you a complete pdf of his uh, cv so that you can read about it okay sir ah mega i will i'm passing on to you the cv you can pass it on to all the students so that they can they can fully realize who they have talked to today who they have listened to you know yes sir and how there is no honor in our society which he has not got so uh, we are not i don't think we, and not just in india abroad so we have many international scholars dr gagandeep kang who came last year for valedictory address last session of this not last year last this he is a fellow of royal society so we have uh, very outstanding people coming to interact with you and they are one of the best in the world not just in india but uh, you are right that one reason why some of our students lack perhaps is that we are not persisting enough in our uh, research efforts we don't review enough literature we don't read enough we don't summarize enough so we don't try to push the boundaries that may be a general problem that i agree but that you can all correct it by reading more and by reviewing more and thereby putting the things on edge next please anybody else before we ask shilpi to request shilpi to share her thoughts so may i yeah uh, so mm -hmm. it's a, it's a feedback sir uh, so first of all it was a great uh, uh, great sessions all of them uh, i thoroughly enjoyed dr ranjit's uh, talk uh, he talked about protein engineering and protein isolation uh, that was a fascinating talk for me uh secondly so i would uh, genuinely like to thank dr mega uh for bearing with me honestly because i had so many favors to ask to her and for uh, showcasing my uh, research to all uh, in this platform so thank you very much sir and ma'am uh i look forward to the or hands on experience that's also thank you thank you next please मेघा बोलो किसी को 
anybody wants to give feedback then please okay so anyway if you uh, don't want to speak now we'll share a feedback form to you as you uh, as every time we uh, used to send it to uh, students and you have to fill it after the session and um, now i request dr shilpi kochar for uh, his uh, her board ma'am hello shilpi you are shilpi are you around Yes, yes, Professor. Good Kindly, if you want to switch on your video, please do that as you wish. It's up to you. I am there. Am I audible? Yes, you are. You are very much audible. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Gupta. Uh, so, I have been listening to the feedback, and I I attended a part of the Professor Hasan's session. Morning. I am sorry, I couldn't join in in the, right from morning. Today was my son's assessment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is too young for all this but now everything is happening online so oh I my god part of his assessment in the morning and could he sit through the <laughs> session or he went around and jumped around no this was the second one if our first assessment happened in september okay so okay. right now but still he needs lot of support from our i can people. imagine yes 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 so uh, mr gupta i would not take uh, much of time but uh, there were few things which i just wanted to sum up one was that it really gives a great sense of pleasure hearing all the feedback and listening to the mentors professors seeing this having grown to this point it's such a great pleasure that under your leadership under the guidance and the team work this has come to this level and is benefiting so many students now and the kind of feedback that we heard just now it has really been very beneficial to the students but i would also want the students to give us few critical points also because it's a part of continuous learning and improvement that we should be doing we should also be improving our efforts enhancing them for the benefit of for students in the future so if there are any if there are any points that come to your mind later you can write back to us to megha or to professor gupta or to me directly so we'll be happy to bring in the improvisations um other thing was that although we are coming to to an end of this program but an end is not always an end so how i look at this end is really as a beginning of a new learning so you all are now equipped with knowledge of grassroots innovations as some of you said that you are listening to this for the first time this word but it's a it's an opening of a new world of learning to you a new world of curiosity then you have validation based practices um, learning based learning and application of science in your day to day life so it's always a new learning a new beginning that we should look at to look at it and i see at see this as a new beginning for all of you and let's take it forward from here and try to build this culture of reasoning curiosity in the day to day life and as i see all of you uh, as i understand you are from different parts of the country i got to know that many of you are also from tier 2 tier 3 cities <coughs> so even if we try to reach out directly as ourselves we may not be able to reach out to so many people around that if we can reach out through you so i would request you all to become the ambassadors of byrac not just this program as you all have undertaken an uh, assignment also on bayrak programs now i hope that you have a fair understanding of what bayrak what srishti does so i expect all of you i request all of you to become our extended arms a part of our integral family and our ambassadors to take the program forward do spread this message to all your friends colleagues in the college in your neighborhood so that more and more students can benefit from this program so i'll just conclude uh, here i'll request professor gupta to kindly take it forward thank you so much professor gupta uh, thank you thank you shilpi there were two or three suggestions yesterday mega can you summarize those which came up yesterday's session uh, yes sir um, they uh, want to have more live experiment and uh, we have tried but again if uh, it would be uh, 
uh, online session then we'll definitely improve the uh, you know live uh, experimental videos and all and um, they wanted a uh, more variety and in the diversity in the topics uh, we are proposing so uh, that was too critical so, so shilpi yes there was one suggest there was one more point you know we said we will increase that can you add that also uh, that was like a uh, journey shared by the science ha uh, uh, so there were three or four uh, ideas which i think shilpi came up yesterday we had an informal chat uh, one was of course live we i think i agree with that second was that there was much more focus on plants Yes. less on animals and microorganisms mm -hmm. and and bioengineering so but actually i recently had a chat with secretary and i will uh, like to talk to you separately that we might think of having now a specialized base also so for example we could have this more focused on animals or agriculture or engineering or of course biotechnology in general for the students uh, of who are plant based because it is true very true i agree with that that our bias was little more towards the plant by technology rather than uh, animal and or uh, even human so uh, that we will have to balance in future at least in the introductory part and then maybe we will have to think about a week of uh, intensive uh, all the three week is too short for specializing but even then we can think of last base we had two tracks we had bioengineering track and we had uh, biotechnology track so because we had many engineers but this batch we had only few so we couldn't run a separate track for bioengineering but this was a suggestion which came and i think we it requires uh, reflection on our part and corrections on our part second thing which came out yesterday and this is also important that there should be more life histories of scientists how they uh just as dr uh, hasnan today narrated his uh, journey how he made mistakes in his life how did he uh, choose how did he change from one uh, line one branch to another one institution to another what kind of influence his parents or his family or his uh, larger extended uh, social network had on his choices etc etc and how he achieved excellence time and again and he continued to talk uh the list of uh, uh, various examples that he gave in his life so uh talking listening to someone who has come up from the ranks i mean he was he was from gaya he, he so native place is gaya so from a small town to achieve the global excellence is a good suggestion so we mentioned that the video of dr kang's uh feedback uh, directly addressed last bis was one which was uh 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 what happened to ria why why is she disheartened uh, let me just read excuse me sir ha ah, ria bolo no sir i am not disheartened now my message was that when the mail came that the webinar is going to be conducted online that time i was disheartened oh, okay 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 i was But... suddenly shocked i said what happened did we do something wrong no no you are no, right no, because of the covid we couldn't have invited you here now uh, although i know some academic institutions have taken chances and i can tell you that situation is very very some even in i am yes, more sir. than 100 students got positive of course most of them recovered that is wonderful but to to deal with that situation requires huge logistical support and in sashti we don't have that kind of support so we didn't want yes, that sir. we should bring you all together and then take chances we didn't want that and even government advisory prevents us from doing it so once the advisory comes that we can start calling students we will start otherwise uh, i'm sorry that we will not be able to do that but uh, we will have more sessions where uh, every week we said we will have one or two where somebody will narrate their life journey of how they became an outstanding scholar so this was one suggestion yesterday which we are going to incorporate live experiments uh, we will record few more videos mega of uh, both microbial screening of plant chemistry of animal biotechnology of medical devices yes how, so that we can show them and we can ask some of the gyati winners to make those videos you know mega yes some yes. of the gyati awardees can make the videos uh, explaining their work and uh, that would be very useful for them mm -hmm. so vikas can be our many other students you you got some but let them also 
describe the way they did their experiments in right. a simple way. So that is something we will add. Uh, what else was there yesterday? And these home experiments we are going to expand next time. I mean, I think this has worked very well. This was first time we did it. Uh, earlier it used to be one or two only, but this time there were several students who did experiments at their home and we want to expand it next time. We want everybody to do at least one experiment at home. Do you all agree with that? Yes, sir. They have asked me that, uh, ma'am, can we uh, validate the grassroots practices they have received at home? Yes, yes, yes. By all means, please try to do that. That will be wonderful. And not only that, you see, when we do experiment, we build some kind of commitment to the cause. So I would not say can, you should, you must. Each one of you should take up simple experiments and try to see how you can validate. I mean, I like that healthy experiment. It was nice, air filter, very nice, other experiments. And please remember that you can also publish your findings with you, uh, with the co-authorship of the innovators. Uh, that would be very nice. But must, you must share your draft with Mega so that we can make sure that it is shared with the innovator also. And we can get their feedback in Gujarati or Hindi as the, or Tamil, whichever language their practices are from. So we always want that whatever research we do on people's knowledge, we must share it back with people. It should not happen that we become globally renowned, but the people remain ignorant. That should not happen. So we would like that that should also be done. Mega, uh, anything else that you want? Otherwise, we can wrap up now. Sir, Richa is there for a vote of thanks. Before huh? before. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Bega. And I deem it as a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank and acknowledge Professor Sayadi Hasnan, who took out his precious time in, the, in his busy schedule. And we are truly humbled by his presence today. And although Sharad has to left because of some personal reason, but yes, we were very much inspired by his journey he narrated today itself from joining to the PhD in life sciences till uh, his journey to the professor in IIT Delhi itself. And so this is very highly motivational and to the young buddies and researchers like us. And next, I would deeply thank Professor Anil K. Gupta for his continuous support and inspiring mentorship. Sir, uh, you are such a great, uh, you know, a motivational and a leader for all of us. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I would further like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Baniz Divan, Dr. Shilpi, and uh, for his continuous support in every and each panel. Even if, uh, and I also want to, you know, thank and acknowledge the BIREC technical team also, we, who always time to time help us in every situation, even in, in, in with, with this with this school or with this Gyati or anything else. So thank you, the BIREC team. Further, I would like to heart, make a heartful thank to Dr. Mega for organizing and coordinating such a BIS school in a very well planned and manner. And thank you, Dr. Mega. It is just possible because of you. And I would also like to thank uh, all the history members who directly and indirectly involved in this organizing in this particular workshop or school, Dr. Shaila, Dr. Omega, Dr. Nubrata, Mr. Ramesh, and many more. Thank you all and many congratulations to all the students and wish you very uh, best for your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Over to you, Meta. Thank you, Richa, for the kind words and um, students. So, uh, I'm, we are here uh, ending this validatory event, but uh, please stay connected. And uh, as we have already discussed, you can send it to me, uh, all your ideas and proposals and uh, for whatever mentorship or guidance or support you want from any other laboratories, we can directly uh, connect you. Or if you want to uh, work in the collaboration with Sushti Lab, you are always welcome. And uh, we can start uh, signing the NDA and uh, we can work together. And sir, uh, over to you if you want to have... Uh... Well, I would just say that uh, it has been wonderful. Uh, we will be sending you the book copy as a gift from our side because I'm very encouraged and enthused by your interest in grassroots innovations. That is one of the purpose. This is one of the key purpose of getting you interested in people's knowledge and uh, not just belief in it, but experimentally validating it. 
and then adding value to that so that people can also benefit from what you do. So this is the uh, one of the major, major purpose that apart from your skill development, uh, apart from your entrepreneurial journey, we also want many of you to set up enterprises, but some of you will become scholars as we always understand and hope. And the fact, uh, Shilpi, before you joined, one of the student uh, had shared a paper. Mega, you should send to Shilpi also a copy of that paper. Yes, sir. Yes. So that uh, he has already published in a very good journal, a paper, I forget, I confuse his name. Uh, Saksham. Not, huh? Saksham Garg. Saksham, Saksham, Saksham Garg, yes, Saksham. Uh, Saksham, uh, we began today's session with his uh, sharing of his paper because uh, we want to celebrate such achievements. So please remember, whenever you do something extraordinary in your life, you should always write to us. You should know that we will take pride in your achievements all your life, not just now. Whenever you achieve something extraordinary, whenever you have a good publication, whenever you have a good technology, whenever you set up a startup, and if you face any difficulty in setting up a startup, please write to us and we will be able to help you whichever way we can and connect you to the right mentors. If some of you would like to pursue certain research where you need a mentor, we will try to assign a mentor to you, either in neighborhood of your place or we will try to assign you a mentor, uh, online mentor from another institution. All the people who came and taught you are potential mentors for you. So you have to decide and then you only should know that the most accomplished scholar is the homework that they expect students to do is also much more than average. So if you really want mentorship from a good scholar, then you must work very hard, read a lot. In my class, if a student needs one hour, I ask him to read at least 50 to 100 papers sometimes, some for PhD student 100 papers, for a postgraduate student PhD 50 to 50 papers. So that my time is utilized well and that the student can ask good questions which will provoke me and make me also learn. So in that sense, we both, all of us have to learn from each other. The presentation on uh, milk, for example, can be made much more stronger by having even few more references. The round that you gave are few, but you should have 10 times more references in that presentation to make it even more rigorous uh, and uh, more uh, st stronger so that if you wish to take this work forward, you will be able to uh, do much better than that. So I wish you all best in your life. Uh, Bayrek, DPT have been a great partner for us, Honeybee Network and Sashti in this effort. We are hoping to scale up the BEST program and the Gathi program in near future. Uh, the Honorable Minister during the Gathi function wanted this whole process to be scaled up and 10 times. So we are in the process of discussion. How do we scale up? But that also means that we will raise our expectation from each one of you. And please spread the word around. We are very keen to get students from aspirational districts. So if you know of your friend, you have relatives in those places, you have acquaintances in those regions, please send them a mail about this announcement. There is a application process at Barak site. You know that, barak.nic.in. You have to submit applications there. But uh, please uh, do spread the word around as Shilpi rightly mentioned, Manish mentioned, you are ambassador of this program and we hope that you will carry forward uh, the spirit of Honeybee Network of cross pollinating So Mega, uh, thank you so much for, I should thank you also for bringing all the energy that you bring always smilingly. And that is not an ordinary quality. Uh, I know that there are always pressures at home. There are always difficulties at this time of COVID but notwithstanding all those pressures, you were available to all the participants all the time, every day, without a single day break. So you will get some holidays now, a uh, well-deserved holiday. Uh, and we will try to make the BIS platform on our website even more robust, where all the videos, all these things will be linked up. So we will hire somebody to help you in that so that everything is done in a manner that students can find at one place videos, links of all the lectures uh, on different topics. And this will become a very useful resource for the students who could not make it to the base or who could not attend. Even they should be able to use this resource of our of the lectures, recorded lectures at our site. All right. So yes. thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.